welcome to episode 36 of my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. We have another special episode tonight talking about two breeders, a current breeder in the POAs right now, very successful program. That's Dakota Chrome and Lori Chrome from uh, Southern Minnesota. And then we're going to end the show tonight talking about Bud and Bertie Campbell from Rochester, Minnesota. Of course, they've both passed away long ago, but they raised POAs for 30, 40 years in southern Minnesota as well, but on the other side of the state over in Rochester. So the famous Campbell's POAs. And actually, uh, Lori's got some relatives to the Campbell's POAs. That's why we put these two episodes together tonight. So we're going to have two special guests later on. We're going to have representing the Campbell's program will be Nikki Reinholdt from back east. And of course, she had Campbell's Dreamcatcher and uh, really revitalized Bud's program when she bought him as a weanling and showed him uh, and made him a grand champion stallion. And she even went and bought his sire then, uh, Campbell Zippo. So we're going to talk all about that. But our first guest tonight is uh, Lori. Lori, are you with me tonight? I sure am. All right. Well, I just put a picture on. You have a big smile there with, I think, two grandchildren. So that's the first picture we're looking at. So thank you for joining me. What town do you live near, Lori? Um, we live just outside of Fairmont, Minnesota, Fairmont. down on I-90. Okay, I-90. So you're across from Rochester. You're probably, what, two and a half hours west of yep, Rochester? About, yep, two hours. Yep, two hours across the state. So, yep, that's pretty cool. Minnesota is kind of a funny state because it's, you know, <laughs> long and narrow. So it was always funny traveling to southern Minnesota. So uh, are you able to see the see the pictures? Yes. Okay. So tell me who these guys are with you. Um, my oldest daughter, Jessica, is married to Cody Collier, and these are her two children. Um, on the right is Robbie. He is four years old, and on the left is Wyatt. He's two. He's two. Okay. All right. So they're already lead line age. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. And I think we're actually going to get to do lead line for the first time they live in Anchorage, Alaska, and will be visiting oh. us uh, for the summer. So. Oh, wow. You know, I have a POA that's supposedly in Alaska. The Cherokee kid, I was told, was sold to Alaska. So that's the end of his Congress wins. But <laughs> it's kind of cool, I guess, to have a POA in Alaska, but it doesn't help the record book. So uh, that's interesting that they live in Alaska. Let's see here what the next picture is. So I got your husband's Dan, right? Correct. Right. Is he kind of behind the scenes guy or does he go to the shows much or? Um, you know what? He does everything that I need him to do. <laughs> He's our, the main chore man here. And um, if you come to the Futurities in the fall, he's usually there. And right. um, if I need him at other shows, he's sure available. OK, well, that's cool. Yeah, I know a lot of families are that way. Like in my family, it was my mom stayed home. She'd only go to the major stuff like the sale. She enjoyed going to the sale. But she knew all the babies' names. And she could tell you, you know, not quite the pedigrees like my dad and I could. But she could get the sire and dam for sure. You know, So and then there's a yeah. lot of families like that. Because it takes a lot when you're breeding, not just showing, but when you have a breeding operation to, uh, you know, somebody needs to stay at home sometimes. So here's another little yeah. one. Uh, with dinosaurs yep. in the background. Who's this? Uh, this is the next one. Um, did you just switch? Oh, I switched. Yeah. So who's with Dan first? I'll switch okay, back to that. Um, that's just his youngest, Wyatt, practicing oh, that's, his horsey back riding. Okay, that's Wyatt again. Okay. Now I'm going to switch yep. back to the little one on the couch. Um, the little one on the uh, couch is um, Toby, Toby, and he belongs to my youngest son, Jacob. Okay. How many kids do you have? I have four children. Okay. I have two boys and two girls. Two girls. Okay. I knew the two girls. The two boys are the oldest too, right? Or... Um, no, oh. the girl is the oldest. The two boys are in the middle, and then Rachel is the youngest. Oh, so okay. Jess is the oldest. Yep. Wow, you had it. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, yes, and when we were showing, it took both Dan and I to get all the kids ready. <laughs> all right. I imagine, yeah. Yeah. So, so I have more pictures here. I think this is... This is a little pony here. This is probably isn't a POA, but a little rider. Um. It's a little Appaloosa Mini okay. um, that I got for my grandchildren, um, and that's Robbie. Um, this was just taken this Christmas. So okay. We were out riding over Christmas break. So. All right. Well, that's cool. 
So I guess everybody can hear you good. I see Tracy's in from Florida, Tracy Sweet Keen. Of course, she's my uh, most loyal watcher and listener. So hopefully other people are uh, tuning in here. So we usually have Lori about, you know, don't get nervous, but 500 to 1,000 views later. But tonight, you know, live, maybe 20 or 30 people watch it live. So and with daylight savings time, I figured we might be hurt a little bit uh, with that because it's so nice out anyway. Uh, you know, it's still light outside, but hi everyone, so, or hey everyone, somebody just commented, so we're getting more people, so we fixed our glitches from last week, our sound glitches, so here's the picture I was telling you about the baby with the tongue sticking out, and that's one of your daughters, I think, probably, in the stall. Um, my yeah. computer's lagging. Well, that's all right. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's my daughter, Rachel. She's that's the Rachel, okay. And we'll talk about this baby later. But, yeah, I just want to. So we yep. don't have pictures of all your family, but we have got quite a few. So we got their names in there. Hopefully they're watching tonight, and they can always go back and watch later. So, uh, oh, there's a little bitty one on a, on a leopard in the stall. So a little bitty baby. <laughs> I think that's that my was, last. Go ahead. That was. Um, Wyatt, when he was six, or excuse me, Robbie, when he was six months old, his first time on a horse. Oh, so, okay. All right. First grandchild, his first ride. His so. first ride. Okay. Well, that's special. I'm glad we got that picture in. So, yep. so Lori, My tell daughter me. Jessica. Oh, your daughter Jessica's there. I recognize her for yep. sure. So, when you were growing up, you guys didn't have uh, horses right away when you were a little girl, did you? No, um, I tell you, it, it was kind of a battle at our house. Um, I wanted a horse really bad, and when I was 10, I had to kind of make up my mind that I told my parents that if they wouldn't get me a horse, they didn't really need to get me any other presents for Christmas or birthdays or anything. And um, I held out for 18 more 18 months before I managed to get a horse. Oh, wow. <laughs> And my parents bought me a Shetland Stallion, of all things, to oh, get for man. your first horse. <laughs> so I always like to try to prepare the guests and everything, but I always like to try to put somebody on the spot. So I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Do you remember his name, the pony's name? Yes, Sheik. <laughs> Sheik, a pony stallion named Sheik. Huh? That was, who would have dreamed that you'd become a, a well-known uh, pony breeder years and years later when you had a pony stallion named Sheik? So did you guys end up gilding him then So when you rode him? Actually not. No. <laughs> I mean, he was a little bit of a spitfire, and once I learned to ride him, it was not a problem at all. Right. Well, he probably, yeah, he probably was uh, fancy as a stallion, you know, probably moved pretty cool and stuff. Uh, not what you'd want in a show ring, but riding down a road and stuff was probably cool. So so then you went on and uh, went to school. I imagine the, the folks didn't want to feed your horse too much once you went to school, huh? To college? Nope, I went to I went to college and they, they hung on to, I ended up with an Appaloosa mare and uh, they hung on to her while I was in college, but when they found out that I was going to go on to grad school, then they uh, saved on me and got rid of her. Man, so. what a reward. Most parents would say, oh, you're going to med school or grad school? Oh, well, well, all right, but they got rid of your horse. Oh, I understand that. Can you imagine these days with the hay prices and inflation, they'd for sure do it so so when you got back in you got into the appaloosas first is that right yes yeah. um yeah the appaloosas um were my favorite love from the time that i was small and that was um, my main horse that i rode when i was in high school okay. i'd gotten an appaloosa filly that i was able to break and ride myself and so uh, that was my first yeah okay. thing that i went for i had a friend help me and we went and found an Appaloosa gilding and an Appaloosa mare. Okay. And uh, I was trying to get my kids to ride, and um, they were just scared of heights. They were about 15, 15 and a half hands, and I'd put them up there, and they'd be like, oh, this horse is going too fast. All right. So, and it was just the height. So right. then we, um, I remembered seeing the POAs, um, I'm from South Dakota, and I would go to the state fair with my parents, and I remember all the kids on the POA ponies that had ponies from Jean Carr and, and around the folks that had been breeding in the state, and uh -huh. I thought, you know what? I'm going to go looking for something like that, and right. I did. Probably Dr. Edinburgh. You've probably seen some of his when you were younger, for sure, Richlands and stuff. So yep. So this Appaloosa we're looking at now, This what was his name? Um, Strawman's Dakota Lad. Tra and you, were, um, you bred him or did you buy him? 
No, but he was the first one I ever, ever bred for. I okay. bought a mare from um, Kim Utke um, in uh, North Dakota at... Sheldax? Yep, at yeah. Sheldax Ranch. And then I picked out my stallion, and we did AI, and this was the result, and he was just an amazing horse. Yeah, I would say you did pretty good for your first time. So, And crossing Sheldax with Roman Straw, man, that's pretty good. I researched that mare after... Uh, I seen this guy's pedigree. They had a lot of babies out of that mare. Um, yeah. Yeah. So she was a good mare, and she was well bred. Of course, they bred really good stuff. Mighty Bright and Prince Plotted, different stuff from Wee's Camp. And so, so you had him, but like you were telling the story, the kids were kind of afraid of the bigger horses. So you decided to get some POAs. Uh, what was the first couple POAs you got for the kids? Well, we. Um couldn't find any and then um i found out that there was a sale in ohio back when they still did that yeah. and there were ponies from michigan and ohio and we traveled all the way from south dakota out to ohio and the first two horses we got were um uh chock full of grace that millard fisher kelly um so you know right. nancy and millard fisher um had shown that mare as a JF jpfc pony and then we bought another horse um, named Sparky's Back Black Magic um, that was bred for by somebody in Michigan. I don't remember anymore who that was. Right. That, they came from that, yeah, Coal Miner Sparkle and all that stuff was came from that line. Right. Yeah, and yeah, Chock Full of Grace, I don't have her picture tonight, but I did a couple of weeks ago when we did the Fisher episode because she came from that. I remember when you bought those two because I would follow the sales, and they were two of the better prospects in that sale for sure. And you hauled those back to South Dakota at the time before you men moved to Minnesota, right? But uh, yep. so then you decided, the, yeah, were, go ahead. Those were the ponies my kids learned to ride on. Yeah, well, that's two pretty good POAs, I'd say, <laughs> for sure. That was two. And then you decided to raise POAs just like you'd raise some Appaloosas and stuff. So that led you to uh, I'm a Few Spot Dream. Was that your first POA staying? No, no? Um, we moved to uh, Del Rapids, South Dakota, and um, Gene Carr and Doc Edinburgh had um, been in Del Rapids originally. Right. And um, Doc Edinburgh had retired, but he had owned a farm that was right on the edge of town, and he had sold it. And at the time that we moved there, they were putting an addition onto the town, and they called it Pony Hills for <laughs> Dr. Doc Edinburgh. Really? That's cool stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's some POA history there, because for those of you that don't know, uh, Doc Edinburgh was a board of director way back in the 60s, and Richland's POAs he had in, uh, in uh, like, Richland's, uh, oh, why can't I say it, Pole Kitty that Gene Carr had, and there was yeah. a lot of famous Richland's, and they had the Peacock, Stallion Peacock's finale. His daughter, Bonnie, was a good rider, and, uh, yeah, so, you, okay, so you ended up with one of his few spots then, is that right? Right, we had got Richland's Maestro was Maestro. his name. Yep. And yep, we used him for about two years. Okay. And then um, I I was doing okay and I was selling my babies, but I wanted to be able to participate in the futurities and be in the competition. And um, I had called a friend of mine and uh, he was a trainer. And I said, come, I want you to look at what I have, my mares and my babies. And I want you to tell me what I can do to improve my breeding program. And he said, you need an updated stallion. The stallion is a little bit more old fashioned and you uh -huh. need something that's going to be putting a more modern look on your baby. Okay. And that led you to, I'm um, a few spot dream. Then. <laughs> Correct. Right. And, and I have a picture of him here with Charlene. That's who you got him from, right? Charlene Link. Yes, yeah. yes. She had him from the time he was a baby. She had bought him from Sheila Bowen, had right. raised him. Right. And then um, she she bought him at the sale, and then she showed him. And then she was actually showing him in St. Louis at the International that um, July. And um, Michelle Ruffino introduced me to Charlene and said she might be interested in selling this stallion. And thank goodness for the international because <laughs> i came home with a new stallion right and it changed your whole operation for sure so yeah absolutely and that's the tie-in tonight because his sire of course is campbell's Dreamcatcher, 
And uh, if you, a lot of your babies look like, you know, or some of them look like Campbell's Dreamcatcher in the color for sure. So you can see that, yeah. you know, and that's what people sometimes they think, you know, oh, just the white stallion like that. Well, the colors in the background, you need that white stallion to get it, you know, especially with solid mares. So uh, here's a picture of you with him when he's older, probably. So he's done breeding now, right? He's, I mean, he's getting older anyway, but. Uh, yep, I think yeah. he's. 20 or 21. Yep. This okay. is just from uh, November. November. And um, he's gelded and he is um, happy in Oklahoma and has a little kid rider and <laughs> is doing great. Well, that's cool. That's good. And, you know, I know you were still using him and, you know, you didn't want to stop using him maybe, but just like with the other one, time does move on, you know, and you have bred to other horses along the way too. We're going to talk about that. You've always put in different blood, you know, so you continue to do that. So, all right, I'm going to start mm -hmm. queuing some of these pictures here. Otherwise, we'll probably be here till 1030. So, <laughs> but I got a whole bunch of pictures. Some didn't make the cut, some I cut out, and then some accidentally got cut by the cloud or whatever, the computer. But I think most of yours made it. So I'm just going to skip through these, and you kind of go ahead and take over a little bit, Lori, and tell us who they are. Um, I don't recognize this one. You don't um, recognize this. Maybe this one isn't one of yours. Okay, well, let's nope, move on. There's not. one of yours. <laughs> First one out of the bat wasn't yours. Nope. Okay, who's the, this one's one of yours, right? Yes, um, okay. this one is uh, DK's Dream to the Beat. Okay. Um, he went to Meredith and Shannon um, Bear, um, now Meredith Peterson and Shannon Schliesman. Okay. Um, and they bought him as a weanling and broke him out and sold him. And somebody, I think, uh, has him in Iowa right now. I'm not sure. Sometimes I lose track of the name of the people once right. I oh, get a chance yeah. to meet them. I understand that. This would be one of the cute photo, you know, cutest foal contest right there. That's a cute photo. So, uh, okay, like I say, some of these ain't going to be in order, and it might show a rider that rode it, you know, before the other one but i'll just let you go ahead i'll try to keep up so i can you know i know there's oh, a little lag is isabel osborne um she and um we named her dove uh, this is dk's chocolate kiss out of chocolatey and then a daughter out of um i'm a few spot dream okay. um she just bought dove this fall and unfortunately um, she had a bad accident at Christmas and had to be put down. Oh, I'm sorry, but I do have several pictures of her. She's the one that has, like, looks like the chocolate the, kiss on her side, right? Or the Yep, yeah. big, huge, yes. Yeah. And I'm so sorry for, for your loss because she was a, a nice POA. But, uh, yep. yep, she did well. She won some futurity um, um, championships. She was reserved right behind Charlene Wallen's um, uh, martini gilding okay this um horse is um rachel and uh, dk's uh dreaming of pizzazz um okay. i initially sold him as a weanling and then i went and bought him back because my dream has always had been to have my children um show one of my ponies before they aged out right and so um, I took him as a two-year-old, and Megan Hansen was kind enough to get him broke out for me and rode him his two-year-old year. And then Rachel started with him uh, in her three-year-old year, in his three-year-old year, which was her last year of youth. Okay. And so she rode him and um, another pony of mine, and we went to Congress, and we, you know, we did something like the a lot of the youth do their last year they try to hit most of the big shows and right and go across the country and we we did that we were able to do that her senior year oh, that's and cool. had a great time okay you guys still own him right you lease him out or yes yeah. um Rachel would never let me sell him so he'll okay. probably be our forever horse okay for her all right and her kids I, I think I put a few of him together. I might be mistaken. A lot of yours is the leopard pattern. Some of them look alike, some don't. But like I told you on the phone, I ran out of time, you know, trying to get yep. them all cued together. But uh, Yep. When Rachel was done with him, um, we loaned him to Savannah Stamen. She did a great job showing him. She had him for two years. Okay. And then when she was um, finished with him, then he went to um, Brooklyn house right and there'll be some pictures yeah you did it better than me i've tried to do it a few times because you know they were guests on the show levi and i say it a little different mm -hmm. every time so i just started calling him levi t but <laughs> so there'll be some pictures of him later too with brooklyn so 
Uh, now I got another one on here with you showing it. A young, looks like a yearling yep. probably. Yep, a yearling stallion. He is uh, DK's Dream Out Loud, and he um, that's when we were at the Rocky Mountain Regional. Okay. And uh, we went from there, then went to Congress. Um, and then his um, two-year-old year, I sold him to um, Katie um, Hassebrook. Okay. And she finished breaking him out and then sold him at the following sale when we were still having a sale the first time in Gordyville. And he went to a family in Michigan with five kids. Oh, wow. That were <laughs> climbing all over him. Well, that's what you can hope for as a breeder. So, yeah, now the picture yeah. I moved to is Brooklyn with the cute uh, Cravilla, Cravilla DeVille costume. You know, with the, I love that costume. I walked into the arena that day. I was a little late. That was just this last year. And uh, I seen that and it just, I walked right to it. You know, I didn't know, know them. I didn't know they were going to be guests on the show or anything, but it just caught my eye. Then I watched the rest of the class, but yeah, that was a cool, cool outfit. So I told yep, you I'd have some yes, pictures of him. Won. Yeah. Yep. Won the costume contest with him. So right. That was great. There, that was great. They did a great job at Congress. Right. So here's a little older photo. I know this is one of yours because you're in the picture, so that always helps. So, <laughs> 2012. Yeah, this is uh, DK's Fancy Dream. Um, okay. He was one of the first. I think he might have been in the second full crop that out of my out of I'm a Few Spot Dream. Um, went to Jen Clark, and she had him for all of his JPFC career, and she did an amazing job getting him trained up and shown. Okay. Yeah, I think they sent me some pictures. I think Robin or something sent me some pictures. A lot of people sent me pictures this time, so if I don't thank everybody, I apologize. But like 12 different people yep. sent me pictures, and most of them was of your stuff. Awesome. So that that's a good brag, too. You know, that means people really like your stuff, and people have been waiting for this episode, so uh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, um, he went to Maddie Chadwick after that. Okay. Um, this next one is uh, DK's uh, star of the show, uh, Mare, and um, Courtney broke her out as a three-year-old and showed her at Congress. She managed to do a phenomenal job. She got first in both Western Pleasure and in um, Hunt Seed Equitation with that Mare and JPFC. Okay. I remember her name coming across the show results, uh, star of the show, yeah. So you've yeah. been fortunate to have some young trainers like Courtney and uh, Megan and then Sammy now, I think, is, is showing some stuff for you. So, you know, that always yep. helps, too, people, because they have families and kids around their stables, you know, so that always helps promote a breeding program for sure. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I'm trying to figure out who this Just is. Just let me know. If it might not be one of yours. There might have been a few slip in. I'm doing three programs tonight, basically, in one. So, well, we'll come back to that one. That's fine. But, see, I should have stuck with just ones with you in the picture, Lori. Then I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, this looks like it's possibly one of them. I'm a spot dream, but I don't recognize the kiddo. Um, okay. This mare is, Holy, what is her name? Oh, DK's Reach for the Stars. Okay. Um, and she is currently three, and she's in Oklahoma with a gal down there um, getting broke out. Okay. And she won the Breeders Challenge when she was a baby? Or? She got reserved. Reserve, you know, okay. Kent, I have yet to win that Breeders <laughs> Challenge. Well, keep, try, keep trying. You'll, you're right in there. You, one of the things I want to say right now, I wish I could have put the pictures together, but I knew I was going to do an episode. I've known you for a while. You didn't even realize we've known each other so long, I don't think, till we started talking on the phone. But uh, when yeah. I was watching the, Nat, the Congress this last year, sitting there watching Halter, and, of course, the large age gildings is always one of the toughest, even though it's a gilding class, it's one of the toughest classes in the show for really good built POAs. And you had three date DKs in the top 10. And I was like, wow, that's, you know, that's podcast worthy right there. And then the loud color too. I mean, that's just on top of it. You know, of course, dispositions <laughs> and confirmations first, but you really, you've put out a lot of nice colors. And uh, yeah, when those three gildings, I don't know all their names. We talked about some of them tonight, pizzazz and some of them, but uh, that really was yeah. impressive. So 
Yep, DK's Fancy Dream, and then I bet um, Kayla was out there with uh, maybe DK's Made for Romance, the yep. black and white one. Yep, I bet okay. that's who it was, I think. Yep. So To me, having three plays that high at the show, I know winning the fraternity because it's you and it's a product right then, you know, and it's fresh would mean a lot. But to mm-hmm. me, when they're older and you can see them out there winning, you know, that's special too, you know. But, uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, it's well, been I know really this is... fun to be to be able to get them into the hands of uh, people who will show them. That is just so right. gratifying. Because now that your kids are growing up and stuff, there's only, and even when they were shown, there's only so much you can do when you're breeding and trying to show, you know, the juggling act showing weanlings and yearlings and then running back yeah. home to cover mares or to, you know, start weaning and stuff. It's tough when you're breeding and showing. And so you need to yeah. get them sold and have somebody else do it, <laughs> you know, haul them down the road. So yeah. who do we have um, here, Laura? This looks like a yearling. Um, yep, DK's Dare to Dream. Um, you had a picture of him, his baby picture. Okay. Um, at one on one of your cover shots the one day. Um, this um, he belongs to uh, Bill and Stephanie uh, Terzuski, um with Winning Spirit Ranch um, down in South Carolina. I think he is right now. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's the picture. I got a lot of comments about him in this. Yeah, in that picture. He looks about the same. So here's another silver trophy. Don't be don't be mad about the silvers. That's nice hardware too. So. <laughs> nope, I'm very proud of them. I just someday I'm <laughs> someday I'm you're gonna win it. Yeah. The gold, so. All right. Yep. Um, this is DK's made for romance. Okay. Um, he's out of a quarter horse, and a mare that I got from Ruth McCoy. She was crucial to my breeding program. She would decide to get rid of horses, and I was happy to take her cast off because <laughs> yeah. I've had some bang-up babies out of mares I've gotten from her. So. Right, right. Well, that's – see, so, you know, you, you've been pretty diverse over the years. I know you had I'm a Few Spot Dream, but even over the years, you bred to quarter horses and apps and, of course, chocolatey, you know, and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's cool, and that kind of gives, you know, the different – but the colors, I don't know how you do it. It's like you got a magic well or something at your place because you seem to get these same <laughs> colors from different bloodlines. So here's yeah. a little different color. I think this is one of yours. I hope it is. I might be, I might have a wrong slide in place again, but uh, it's a done. Is this one of oh, yours? Oh, yeah. This is the daughter of I'm a Few Spot Dream out of Chocolatey. Um, okay. We called him uh, DK's Dun Dreaming. Okay. And, uh, cute little done guy that we had um unfortunately he is um negative lp lp and he got to go to a very nice family with three kids okay. um, and they're riding him now well he so. still looks nice yeah so how many uh chocolatey babies have you had oh my goodness put me on um, the I spot have again. Solid <laughs> south black philly um two colored fillies and two solid gildings so i've had two colored and and oh, actually, I take that back. I've had three because this little gal is a uh, colored um, Philly out of chocolatey. And then didn't you have the colt so that gardeners have? Was it by chocolatey? Yeah. 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 Okay. So I have one colored colt, three colored Phillies, and three solids. Okay. So, All right. Yeah, this is a yeah. Philly. But what year was this one? This is a pretty new one, right? Um, she's a yearling this yearling, year. She's yeah. at our place. Okay. Yeah. We'll be showing her this this year what's so. her name we better plug her plug her name oh oh on the spot was... again <laughs> you come up with um, chic a lot easier than you coming up with the modern ones here. you know i tell you after i get all of these um we call her demi i'm trying to oh he keeps made in chocolate is what we call made her. In cho- okay that's a great name yep okay yeah i know when you call them bar names and you haven't heard her name at, a, at the show so much so this is one of my favorites. I don't know who this is, but just this picture, something about the eye set and the neck set. Tell me who uh, this one is. We're um, at the select sire again. Um, DK's Echoes of Starlight is her name. Um, she is out of pal Casey Jones. Okay. And um, one of my um, broodmares that's had, like um, DK's Dreaming of Pizzazz, it's the same. Okay. The same dam. Same. All right. So... Okay, I like yep, this she, one. Um, this is from the very last Futurity just this past fall. Okay, so. yep, 2021, okay. Yep. So you still have this one or did you sell this one? Yep, 
Nope. Oh. Um, the little bay dun that was just in the picture before, and then this one um, are both yearlings this spring, and we're hoping to be able to show them. Wow, that's a that'll be a nice little trail to load those two fillies. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yep. Wow. Well, that's cool. They'll, they could be future broodmares, too, because they're both well-bred. So. Um, that's, the, that's the plan, huh? <laughs> We're starting to get some people po uh, popping up now, that. Terry and Jackie. Uh, a couple different Jackies are in here watching, so that's good. So Okay, this is one of yours, right? Yep. Okay. Yep, DK's Fancy Dream. Um, Jen Clark, you had seen us in the whole lineup when she was riding him. She was doing lunge line with him. She bought him as a weanling at the sale in the fall. Okay, all right. That year, and I think he's a 2010 baby. Oh, okay. And then this is, I forget who this is, but I know there's a big blanket behind there. You're just covering up the, the blanket, but. Oh, this is the... Um, mirror that Courtney was sitting on earlier okay. that I had won. Um, she must be, I think she's six this year now. Okay. Yeah, and some so, of these uh, backdrops, you can't tell the years. I always It always bugs me to see. It's either in such small print or they just didn't put it on there, so you got to guess what national show it was. So here's the baby yep. that you see. You had a picture of or you were holding it and you said this is the one I used, I believe. Uh, he's in the stall here. This is the, one of the first ones I used yep, to advertise. Yeah. Yep. DK's Dare to Dream. Dare to yep, Dream. I would, that was the yearling one that I say, saw right. that um, Bill and um, Stephanie Terzus used to have. Right. Or, yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now here's a little bit wider leopard, so he doesn't have all the flex or ticks on him as much as some of your stuff. We're going to talk about that a little bit too, some of the color patterns. Uh, yep. Um, this is out of a daughter of Santi Cody, um, uh, Palomino, and then my daughter's show mare, um, the um, Elegance in Gold, that was raised by uh, Jan Rogers. Mm -hmm. That would be the dam, and then uh, Sire is the I'm a Few Spot Dream Horse. Oh, okay. And, yes, he, he is vivid in vivid, his coloration. Yeah. Vivid, for sure, because some of yours that we've been showing, they're almost like blankets you know what i mean like tacapa gold was that way you mentioned jan rogers and she you know she had mm -hmm. tacapa gold and he he was like that but you also get a lot of dark blankets with uh or dark with little blankets too it seems like you get a lot of those so we're looking at one of those now i can't keep all these straight i'm sorry but that's why you're on here as a guest <laughs> too so you can mention all these but yep um you had shown me um, earlier with a black and white uh, um, stud colt that I had gotten uh, reserve in the, okay. um, fall security. And then um, Kathy McKenzie um, bought him from me at that point in time. And Kayla Bird and she have been showing him to uh, good success for okay. the last couple of years. So um, he is DK's made for romance. Made he was out of the quarter horse stallion. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep, he's Romantic one of your time. one of your top Dodge DKs for sure. Yeah. Yep. So here's Courtney he smiling with a with a trophy. I know this is one of yours. So this is a leopard with the dark legs. Um, yep, this is the one with the big spot on her side. Oh, this um, is the dog. okay. All right. Yep, she won the halter class at um, Congress last summer. Last summer, yep. We're gonna have a yep. few more of her, but uh, and then this is uh, I believe this is. Uh, Brooklyn here, I think, with uh, DK's Dreaming of Pizzazz. Yep, it is. It says it right on the yep. picture. <laughs> yep, yes. Yeah, I've, I've got some amazing pictures of her with that pony. She has done a bang-up job. I Just fabulous with him. Yep. So. Yeah, you did good Maybe getting him placed with them because, and then you can maybe get him back for the grandkids or something, but uh, here's, yeah. here's the yeah. Dove one again as a baby with you holding her so um that's a unique color is that why you called her chocolate kiss because that mark on her or was that just yes. a coincidence okay because that's the first thing i thought yeah. of was it look you know yeah. you could kind of think that so and here she is again i know we have a lot of pictures of her but uh and i'm yep. i'm sorry that you know she passed away but she was a good show mare built oh. really nice and yeah uh, you know she that's going to happen in the and, and babies, it happens too. You know, as a breeder, it's tough to, you have a lot of heartbreaks in this industry. That's why a lot of people don't do it. If it was easy, everybody would do it. The old saying, well, it's kind of raising horses and ponies are the same way. You know, but yeah. uh, here's, uh, I think, Brooklyn again with 
Yep, with pizzazz. DK's Dreaming of Pizzazz. Yep. yep. So here's one of them that has a lot of that coloring. You know, they they didn't roan; they were born that way. You know, and you you kind of didn't you haven't ended up with too many roans, and some of it's because of this. You know, is right. Yep. Well, yeah. a lot of times they're even whiter, like um, this DK's Dreaming of Pizzazz. I, I don't know if you have a, his picture in there. I, I had sent it to you late the other day, okay. um, but he was like all white with just spots when he was a baby and then all of this roaning comes in okay. um, as they get older and um, it's pretty amazing I talked to a couple of years ago they had the geneticist um, from UC Davis at the POA convention and it was super informative and I had a chance I had brought my pictures and I said what is this how can this happen because I have these babies that are just plain leopards when they're young and then they come up with all this speckly stuff on it and she called it reverse roaning okay uh -huh. and so she said it was like a thing they don't have it you know like identified yet you know as right. far as um you know where on the gene it is or all of that kind of stuff but she said it was like a real thing right. like campbell's dream catcher had it and it right. must have come down then through that whole side so right i've seen a lot of poas with it but uh, you seem to get quite a few and while you're getting the color a lot of your colors coming from the dream catcher line all the way we could go way back you know uh, where it's yep. coming from but and mm -hmm. i will yep. a little bit when i yeah when i get into the campbell's segment later you'll kind of see why i got some of these pictures messed up i think we've seen this picture already we did but when we uh you'll see because some of the dream catcher babies that nikki had were colored very similar to these and some of the people mm -hmm. that bred the dream catcher had you know and they're related very close so that's one of the reasons so um i think this is pizzazz again i might be wrong but nope no nope, this, this is this is a fancy dream fancy dream um, okay yes and this is pizzazz so this they're is half brothers yeah different. this is the one i met was pizzazz because i went by that one was a double the picture uh, i had it in yep. here earlier so okay and then this yep, is this somebody is one, sent me this one. Uh, I don't know who this girl is, but you'll know who this is, I think. <laughs> oh, yes. This is Brandy Bland's daughter. Okay. Um, and uh, this is a chocolatey baby. Um, one of the gentlemen um, that lives here in Minnesota near me um, had um, a POA mare that from Carl Oss. Okay. Um, and um, he is older, and he said, would you like to um, lease this mare? And so I leased her and bred her to Chocolatey and got this cute little um, baby, DK's okay. Chocolatey Reward, and uh, um, she went down to um, to Oklahoma. Well, actually okay. now Texas. Texas. So. They sent me a bunch of pictures, but I could only use, you know, one, I think, or so. So... You mentioned sure. earlier that Kathy McKenzie had one of yours. I believe this is probably him as a little baby, I'm guessing. I might be wrong. Oh, <laughs> actually, this, mm -hmm. this one was just born this spring. Oh, okay. I mean, she, she is not even, she, I guess she's just a month old oh, now. This, oh, this so, is this um, year's baby? Yes. She's, okay. Uh, she was born February 8th, and um, she's out of the best bet yet. Okay. And then a daughter out of um, I'm a Few Spot Dream. And so, uh, yes, you'll be seeing her at the Fall Futurity. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't realize we had 2022 babies in here already. So. Yeah, that's, she's a this year's baby. So you have a couple. Uh, out, of the, out of the app, the best bet yet. Best bet yet, yeah. And then one of I'm yeah. a Few Spot Dream. How many uh, daughters of his do you have? Um, I still own... To three of his daughters yet three of his daughters okay all right that's cool that's good that'll yep. continue that Thanks. color line too i bet so yep that's what i'm hoping right this, yep this is a son out of i'm a few spot dream um his name is uh, little white lie he was bred for by caitlin and uh, bridget dickman okay and um then caitlin showed him successfully through his three-year-old year and then sold him to uh Charlie and Kelly Phillips, and now he is one of their stallions at their program. Right, and here's a profile picture of him. He's kind of a tank. He, uh, I think he's one of the up-and-coming young stallions, uh, for sure. So yeah, he he reminds me very much of his sire. He I does, mean, yeah. Just the same, 
in head and shape and right. build. He's got that same kind of yep, throat latch and the way his head's set on and yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay, here's a oh I see I like it when the name's in here. Here's DK Dreaming of Pizzazz. So I like when there's a check. <laughs> Cause then I can tell. So Yep. Um Sammy showed him at the fall security that year for me and we've taken a picture together. So. Right. You guys look alike. You got blue collars on and gray and black and looking good there. So uh great minds think alike. All right. right. Okay, here, hopefully this isn't a duplicate, but again, I can't tell the year, but uh, you're with a young one here at the Fichiri. Um, the one with the big spot on her side, this is a full sister out of Chocolatey, and my, um, I'm a few spot dream daughter. Okay. Um, and so she went to uh, Caitlin Tomato, um, who was living in Sioux Falls, but now is moving back to Des Moines area. Okay. So she has this uh, young filly and will be riding her this year. Okay. That's kind of unique, the black legs there. All, I mean, way yeah. up, you know, not just to the knees and the hocks. It's, yep. it's way yep. up. So, all right. Yeah, be that the... would be the Bay Dunn came through. All right. All right. So I'm definitely going to need your help here. I don't know if one of these is related to your program or if I got the right slide. <laughs> nope, this is this is my daughter, Rachel. And okay. And we did the, her last year run. These are her, our two ponies that we showed. So on the left is DK Dreaming of Pizzazz, and on the right is DK Starfield Dream. Okay, that's um, the two you were talking about when she went on her last, like her senior year or, you know, last yep. year in POAs. So they were both yep. DKs that she showed. That was cool too so yeah that's yep, a good picture was, yeah that's one of my favorite pictures of all time right so. well we'll hold she on just did, she <laughs> did well right i'm glad that one made it so i'm gonna skip over that one that's kiss again we've seen her a lot so here's a little baby in probably in your arena i'm guessing there's people looking at her here i didn't crop out all the people so oh yep yeah, this is the one that the little girl was hugging okay this, this is, is my this 2020 year. Yep, my 2022 baby, so. Okay. All right. This is by the Appaloosa stallion you were talking about. Correct. Right. Okay. Correct. Yep. We're nice. pleased as punch with her. She's very nice. Is it just me, or do you seem to get a lot of fillies? I don't know. It seems like you do. You've had a lot of you colts, too, but. Yes. I don't know. I like fillies. Some people aren't mare people, but I, I've always liked mares, so I'm sick with pink when I get a mare. So. All right. I actually know the name of this one, or I know the end of it. Azure Skies is in the name of this one, I believe. Yeah. 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 Um, her dam was um, a, from Dykstra's program, um, the Dutch um, program. Okay, right. Um, and out of I'm a Few Spot Dream, and I showed her her yearling year and in the futurity, and we did awesome. She got me first place in In Hand Trail out of 50 horses and wow. 54 horses and i was so pleased with her she's just the best minded little thing she went to babette shipman um down in missouri okay and i think she still owns her okay that's, so yeah that is one thing about your your program you do have uh, the disposition of course the, the color too and they're built good you can tell that when you show them as babies because you're always right up there uh, but the dispositions is what keeps them going you know, and keeps them coming back, for sure. So. Yeah, I like I like it that you can put the kids on them. <laughs> right. And that's been, you know, I always was, looked and tried hard to find ponies for my kids, and I just, you know, I that's still a goal and a priority. It's a lot of mares have gone down the road from my house because of the babies just didn't quite have the disposition I wanted, and right. trying to, to always trying to move toward that. Yeah. Well, you've done so that. This um, yearling um, picture. Um, so the little baby that was free in the arena that had the Appaloosa baby, right. she is out of this little mare. Oh, okay. This is the mother. All right. Yep. Yep. The little black baby that. Okay. Um, it's my 22 baby. So she came right. out of this mare here. Okay. Um, and then the one with the big kiss on her side, uh, DK's Chocolate Kiss, right. um, this is the dam of that mare as well. Oh, okay. Because they're full. Yeah. Full siblings. Okay. All right, here's Pizzazz again. We have a lot of pictures of him. So, of course, he's one of the one of the more famous ones going right now, I would say. Now, this, I thought this was a unique head, and 
unique coloring on this leopard. We have a couple pictures of him, I think. So, yep. who's this one? Um, this is the one um, that Sean um, has, Sean Smith. Okay. Um, she has, I think he is three this year, and she's been riding him. So. Okay. That's a pretty unique face there. I like that. <laughs> so. Yep. I, I know why they took a picture, so. Yes, he's I, he's very cool looking. Yeah. And he's, I think he's getting more spots and um, darker on his neck as he gets older, so. Right. They just started a car uh -huh. up in our showroom, so if people watching hear a little rumble, they just started a, a Challenger <laughs> Hemi engine. So I'm coming from a studio in my at my dealership where I work. So uh, is this a produce a dam shot here or? Um, no, actually no? two different dams. Okay. Um, both of them owned by Jennifer Clark. Um, the dam, the one on the left, was a full um, sibling to uh, see our star kid. And then the one on the right is uh, one that you saw earlier that she was riding. Um, he was out of an app mare. Okay. I remember you um, had that mare, the, the full sister, because I always liked that mare. She had four white socks, and but she was more solid, wasn't she, the, the sister to yep. the star kid? Yeah. Um, yep. Okay, here you are out. We all know where this picture is. If you've been in POAs any time within the last five years or 20 or 30 years, you know, Des Moines. So... Yep, this is the one that um, Courtney had was riding then, um, right. DK Star of the Show. This Star is her show. weanling year that okay. I was showing her. So. Okay. See, if she runs out a little bit, she'll have a mark on her side, too, it looks like. <laughs> but she might not. Um, <laughs> no, she's, I don't know if uh, you've seen that. The, the, I sent you, uh, maybe, I think Rachel sent you her head shot right. that she fills the whole screen. Okay. So she's modeled quite a bit on her nose. She was on the Appaloosa um, a site a couple of years ago after she was her yearling year because I had taken that picture and um, just it was a striking um, picture that Rachel Riley took and right. um, she has her head kind of turned back toward her flank and oh there like we are I did something right Lori it's the next picture so <laughs> that's the one that's the one I like it when things come together on live podcasts yep, that's so, her, that's so, her. Yeah, yeah. she got more modeling and a little right. bit of her own but she basically still looks like she that. She still looks like that. So, but it was unique, that yeah. pat, that spot inside the pattern, you know, that big chunk yep. she had there. So uh, this might be her, too. I don't know if this is her or not. This is uh, Courtney showing. Yeah. Yeah. And she's actually gotten darker. Like, if you look over her flank and on her body... Um, she's gotten a lot. She got that reverse roaning in her white area. So the only like true white she has is really a few spots right up over on the top of her um, haunches. Okay. So, right. Yep. Now we got a baby with a halter on out in the pasture. This is DK's dream in a pizzazz when he was a oh, baby. Oh, this is him as a baby. Okay. That well, we color, seen... all the color on his neck. This, and all I'm that. glad he we had this. Have, yeah. See, you can see right in that have spot. Any yeah. of that? Nope. There's yep. that big white metal right in the middle of his neck, kind of on the underside of his neck, and you can't see any of that. Yeah. And that's... if you look at him now, that when Brooklyn's showing him, he almost looks like he's got a blanket. You know, right. He's so dark up along in his neck and over his shoulders and stuff, but. He didn't look like that when he was a baby, so that was I sent that specifically so that you know you could see the the definite of the reverse right. roaming. Right. I wish I would have had that one in earlier, but at least it makes sense. Yeah, that we got to see it okay. here. Uh, you have a great breeder standing next to you, Jackie Guthrie. She's uh, of course connected to the Breeders Challenge for charity, so she's handing you a check. This is Chocolate Kiss again, and Courtney uh, is holding her. Yep. Yeah. Yep, as her yearling year, yep, yearling. she got first in the in hand trail for yeah. me, so she did okay. a great job with her. Uh, now we got a few spot. I don't know which one this is. It doesn't have how many few spots have you had really? Do you get that many for having a few spot stay in all those years? No, no, I didn't. I have no. not because you you breed some solid mares to him, you know, to kind of make sure you don't do that too, <laughs> you know. But. Uh, this is, I think this is one of the fillies that we had. Okay. 
Now, different, different uh, people sent me stuff, too. You know, your daughter, Rachel, sent me stuff. And, of course, Courtney did. And I yeah, had all kinds of... one of the ones I sent. Okay. Um, That's all right. Well, we got so many pictures <laughs> that we're fine. So this is a great say, show picture. Be, yeah, I was going to say, this might even be um, I'm a Little White Lie. Oh, it could have been. Oh, him. and then this is um, DK's Dream of Pizzazz. The one on the right is him. You see how dark his neck is and stuff. Right. And then the one is um, DK's Fancy Dream. So these guys were at Congress. They, um, Maddie Chadwick had him, and all year in Minnesota, um, it was one or the other would get most colorful. And then we went to Congress, and Rachel got first, and Maddie got second. And I'm like, <laughs> I got to have a picture of this. <laughs> That's what I'm talking well, about. Your stuff does good in the halter classes, but they rock the most colorful classes. You know, they're just always right up there. So, yep, I love it. Yeah. Here's a Shane Rucks photo, up close photo of a leopard. And this I, must be, that looks like Tucker. Um, his name was, oh my goodness. He went to, um, Somebody in Missouri. I think. I think he went to um, ultimately to Bobette Shipman, and then she sold him to somebody else. Okay. This would be um, trying to remember his name. He was oh. one of the earlier babies that I had. I'm gonna queue up another one while we're trying to, because I got so many pictures to go through. So, uh, this might be the baby you had this year. I'm thinking, it's in yep. the stall. Yeah. Yep. That was her on her birthday so okay all right looks good okay here's one of your age gildings that's made a name for himself uh if i guess i'll get it wrong but i would guess romance or one of those but <laughs> yep dk's made for romance made for romance yeah, okay he, you know i like it i try to breed i hate it when they roam out right. i like it when you get true colors and then oh yeah in six years you still have the same horse that you bought right because um, that's the bad thing about that's darker right appaloosas and and poas the, if they roan out so that that really helps their value too someone wrote the white one i think jen clark bought is what they put the white one was the one i think jen clark bought i don't know who wrote yep, that and then, and then yep jen clark had him initially and then he went to missouri after okay. that all right uh, here we are at the Congress again. You always seem to match the exhibitors. Like you and Sammy were in purple shirts, and here you're in red shirts. So you got, I didn't realize, Lori, your flair for fashion. I knew you you know, you know, have a good career and you raise nice ponies, but I didn't realize that your fashion sense. So. It was sheer accident, believe it's me. Sheer accident, yeah. <laughs> Usually at that show, you're just trying to wear something to be cool, you know. I mean, not cool like fashionable uh, cool yes, yeah was, so you don't have uh, a heat hot. stroke yeah. Yep. Yep. yep this is uh dk star of the show okay um and she actually has a youth rider on her that's gonna be uh showing her this summer okay um kindley kindley chambers um out of oklahoma is gonna be showing oh cool her. maybe i'll see her down here. this is courtney in this picture together. so that's good you're yep. getting them out to some families and i think oh, i'm winding courtney down did. on on pictures a little bit but I had some, yep. it was so hard to cut some of these out because of the people like this person smiling, you know, I mean, it was oh, just, it's yep. a good this picture. Sean Smith. Yeah, Sean nope. Smith. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Courtney's done such an excellent job breaking the ponies for me that um, when you get on them, I mean, after she's had them for a year, they're just, they know their stuff. Right. We need to put a plug in for her CEO performance horses in Wisconsin. So she does a good job for a lot of. POA people. Uh, this is another yep. little baby here. Big star on the face. Yeah. Yep. yep. This would be a full sibling to DK's um, Dare to Dream, the stud colt that we saw earlier. Okay. Um, she initially went to Alexandra Gallagher in Michigan, and then she's somewhere in Missouri now, and I can't remember the gal's name. She messaged me, and I could not find the message. Okay. So she's some she's somewhere down there now. So. Okay. All right, now we have a lunge line. I think I got the right clip here. So, again, I can't remember who sent this to me. That looks like Mark Minky. <laughs> this might not be one of yours, but I think it is. So we'll we'll move on. A couple nope. of these are uh, questionable. So 
Uh, but that's fine. I got a lot of them. Okay, or we've this, looked. Oh, maybe this is the one read. We talked about the bay done with the legs. I bet this is a Rick Canado. Oh, the okay. last one. Okay. With a little silly. Um, yep, and then this is um, DK's. Um, yep, they just said Rick Canado so. was in Lunge Line. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yep. Several people was, commented. So, well, don't feel bad, yep, people. Was, Lori's had so many. <laughs> I know how it goes. So that's. I don't feel bad. I wanted to write all these down. I'm like, oh, I can't. It would have took me two days to connect all the pictures with the, the name. So some of these I'm just going to go through. Some of these are doubles. Yep. You uh, can just keep on. Yep. Going. Yeah. Now I don't know if we've seen this one yet. I think this is one of yours. Yep. This yep. is uh, DK star of the show and Courtney Roder and then. Um, we talked about this little Bay Dunn filly of chocolatey. Um, right. This one, I think um, Annie and Hagopian and her mom have her in okay. uh, Minnesota somewhere here. DK's Wish for the Dream. This is a little different color. Is this, uh, is, this a dream. is this related to the Star Kid full sister? Yes. Yeah, that's a, I could um, tell a yep. little redder, you know, a little different color, not as dark. So. Yeah. Yeah, and not a, I'm a few spot dream. Now yeah. this picture got sent to me about three different ways. So I think you did, and Rachel did, and so, uh, maybe Courtney did. So and I cropped oh. it. I cropped this picture. It showed a lot more of the arena. Uh, so yeah, this is just so amazing. I mean, Courtney has her crossing over, or just like right. I mean, what you want them to do. And it's such an impressive picture. And um, this is uh, DK's uh, chocolate kiss. Uh, chocolate there, kiss. The, okay. Right. Yep, from Chocolatey Baby, yep. All right. Let's see, and then I think this might be, like I say, I am winding down on pictures. Oh, finally. So. yep. This is um, uh, out of uh, the daughter of uh, Santi Cody, okay. um, Judy Hansen. Um, this little mare we called her Cleo, and her name was, hang on a second, I'll find it here. She's a Palomino, huh, or a Don, yep. I guess, Palomino. Yeah. No, she's actually Palomino, and she's yeah. actually really pretty um, Palomino. Right. I'm trying to she look here where her name is. Um, DK's Golden Dream, we call her. Okay, Golden Dream. All right. Yep. Okay, so, yeah. you know, as breeders do, you have to move on to, you know, different stallions and stuff. So you re recently uh, got another stallion. What's his name? Uh, Santi? Um, Santi St. Legend. Okay. Um, he's my new little guy, and I apologize. I don't even have any good pictures of him yet. This is um, when I went to pick him up, um, and uh, we're just getting used to him, and right. I'm sure excited to have him for our first uh, breeding season this spring. Now. Right. And people got to remember, um, this isn't a show photo or anything like that. That's just him out of the pasture, out of the pen, you know what I mean? His mane's not all doctored up and he's you know he's not fitted up so he's got a little belly but that doesn't mean how he's going to produce i really like his head he's got a nice jaw yeah, winter, his winter fur so right but yes he's, he's i can't a, wait i i think you're going to get some of the more some of the same colors again with him uh, you might get a little more <laughs> chrome but you're going to get the darks and the blacks again and he's a snow cap of course so um well yeah and people seem to like no caps and blankets uh, a little bit easier to keep clean than a, a, leopard, a leopard horse. Well, in the breeding shed, I like few spots and snow caps for sure. So he's not very tall, Lori. How tall is he? Or maybe you said. Um, he's 50 and a half when we measured him. Okay. So he's not. So, yes, he's just a little guy. So, All right. Um, yep. The yearlings that I had um, are out of Chocolatey and Pal Casey Jones, and um, they look like they're going to be large um, mares. And so I was looking for, you know, something that I need, I need to breed them back small. We always talk about, you know, uh, looking at the generations back and when they come out of um, chocolatey or a full size Appaloosa or a full size quarter horse, you know, I need to make sure that I'm, I may get small, but I still need to be careful because I'm watching for the height and, right. you know, want to try to protect things from down the line. This is DK's Dream Out Loud. He's okay. the one we saw a little bit earlier that um, went to uh, Michigan. Okay. And I put this picture yeah. mainly, don't don't get embarrassed, but mainly for you because I thought it was a good picture because I think this is the last one I have. So I said, it's a good picture of him too, but I wanted to include a picture of you because you've been <laughs> the driving force. I know Dan and all the kids and everything, but when people say DK's or Dakota 
Chrome, the, what do they always say? Lori Chrome. You always say Lori Chrome, Lori Chrome. You know, so I wanted to give credit to your family tonight, but I thought this was a good shot of you out in the ring doing what you love to do. So, uh, with one of your homebreds. So, well, uh, we did a good job. Well, you did a good job, I think. I think I led you in the pictures. I wish I could have memorized all of them, but, you know, if I could do that, I probably wouldn't. Uh, I'd be doing something else, making a lot more money if I had that good a memory. So, but you've raised a lot of great um, ones, uh, and I hope you watch the show, Lori. Continue to watch the show because you'll see a lot of history and and stuff related to your program. So, it'll be pretty cool. Oh yeah, I'm. Well, I'll stay on here for sure. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Well. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks, Lori. You were a great guest. So, uh, good luck with the rest of your babies, and I'll probably see you in in Tulsa or somewhere. So. Looking forward to it. Okay, Lori. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. All right. So that was Lori Chrome from Minnesota. She's one of the great breeders going right now. She's been connected with POAs for a long time, 20 years or so probably. As she said, she uh, had some Appaloosas and stuff, and then the kids needed something a little shorter, so that's how it happens a lot of times. And then uh, she's really turned into a... a Fancy, fabulous, you know, breeder. A lot of her ponies are, I do use the word fancy, you know, like this one right here in the ring. Of course, the color helps a lot. She's tied into um, some good color genes, and she uses a lot of different uh, pedigrees, too. She's bred to Appaloosas and Quarter Horses and has used uh, other mares, but she's also tapped in some to some really good uh, POA genetics. And this all ties in tonight. So this is our halfway show, halfway point of the show. We're about an hour in, maybe a little over an hour, so that worked good. We got a great segment now about Bud and Bertie Campbell, and a lot of the POAs we just seen are related to uh, their program through Campbell's Dreamcatcher. Uh, I'm a few spot dream, and then his sire Campbell's Dreamcatcher, and of course his sire Campbell Zippo. I remember the day he was born. The reason Bud named him Campbell Zippo is because he seen him up on the hill, and it was like number one. It was before number one. He liked him so much, and he was a few spot, and he was just profiling, and he called us and said, "I had a few spot baby born today, and I named him Zippo because he's one of my favorites." So. Uh, that's what we're going to move on to now. So if you guys need to uh, get a drink, this is a two-water show for me. For sure, I'm drinking my second bottle right now. So the gentleman second to the left is who we're going to talk about, him and his wife, Bertie. I don't have a lot of pictures of Bertie. Of course, she was kind of the behind the scenes. She would get the horses ready for Bud. A lot of people don't realize this, but when Bud and Bertie were younger, and when I say younger in their 50s uh, and even 60s, they conditioned and fitted a lot of babies. They won the Minnesota Futurity a lot. They even showed some Appaloosas and did well in the big Futurities in Minnesota and stuff with some of their Appaloosas. And uh, they just, Bud was uh, an interior decorator, a house decorator, and he had an eye for detail. And that's how his babies looked. He could clip a baby like nobody's business. He was a, a great a body clipper. He taught my dad a lot of tricks on body clipping. And my dad became a good clipper uh, because of Bud, the way he... He was, and Bud wasn't really a man of patience. You wouldn't think he'd be have patience to work with babies like that, but he just loved to make them look really nice. So, so Bud and Bertie started out in the 1960s. Their first stallion they purchased was Coretz Hawkeye. This is him here. Of course, he was a son of Coretz Scottish Chieftain, who was a famous POA at the time. Of course, number 18th POA ever registered. And uh, this is Scottish Chieftain here with Bob and Lori Corrette from uh, Montana. Like I say, all the Correttes that became famous and Bud tapped into that with uh, Corrette's Hawkeye. Uh, he was in a Minnesota sale and Bud found him and uh, he ended up being, uh, um, like I say, his sire. Somebody just said, great picture. Let me go back to that real quick too because that kind of ties in. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. I better say who all these people are. You can't see Paul's face, but on the left is Paul Passy, the CAs. Uh, back Crossroad Acres back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Of course, bred to Gold Prince a lot in the early days. And then Bud Campbell and then uh, Tom Foster there. Linda Quass. We'll be talking about the Quass family a lot tonight. Bob and Linda, their oldest daughter, Lori's in some pictures here. And then, of course, the famous Leonard Lewis. There's Leonard Lewis for charity and all kinds of awards after his name. He's got a Minnesota Twins hat on there and always a smirk on his face. He'll be an episode in a couple weeks. We'll have fun talking about uh, Leonard Lewis and his family. And then a good personal friend of ours lived north of us, north uh, 
west of us, Arnie Marker. He's in this picture as well. So these were the adults that showed. This was probably like 83 or so, and that's at the Leonard Lewis house where they always had the, the charity every year. So I wanted to go back to that picture. As people said, uh, you know, great memories there from the Minnesota Club. So one of the first famous Campbell's POAs that uh, Bud produced was Campbell's Dewdrop. This is her winning the Minnesota for charity, but this is in Iowa. Uh, Harper Krupp ended up with this filly, and then I think she ended up back with Bud. Harper won the national show with her, and I believe he was high point in the nation, and uh, it was one of Harper's early uh, halter champions too. So this would have been early on. I believe this picture is taken in 71, if you can see there in the, with the photo credit. So, yep, Campbell's Dewdrop became uh, one of the early Campbell's. And then when Bud got her back, he had a Campbell Sassafras, or Dewdrop Sassafras was her name. Uh, I'm not sure how she got her name that way, but she was used in some promotional uh, items and stuff, a real loud-colored POA. So uh, another one of the early Campbell's is Campbell's Jill. This is a Hawkeye daughter. Uh, this is when Bud consigned her to the sale in uh, 1977. This is her... Uh, Dynamite Colt, Driftwood's Dynamite Colt. I don't think he became that famous. Uh, Terry Louth, who grew up as Terry Kruger in the POAs, wrote me that she uh, trained this filly or broker and several other Campbells for Bud back in the day. And then, of course, this filly went on to the Quas family. And there's Lori Quas. We just seen her mother, Linda, in that group photo. Uh, Lori's got an arm full of trophies there and all smiles. Of course, Jill was a small mare. She ended up a supreme champion, and then they raised some babies out of her. The, the Quas family was uh, very connected to Bud. They, uh, they showed some of his stuff and bought a lot of his stuff and then ended up breeding uh, some of their mares to his stallions and stuff. This is a good shot of Lori uh, before she moved on to a bigger POA. Of course, Lori's sister uh, rode her too, so uh, rode Campbell's Jill. And here's Campbell's Jill's supreme champion plaque. Uh, it was dedicated in 1987. I think she finished it in uh, 86 is when she finished her Supreme. Of course, she had several foals by then already. Um, so as Bud still had Campbell's, uh, or I mean, uh, Corrette's Hawkeye, he looked for another stallion as well, and he found him through another famous line, and that was the Danny Boy line. And this is the fourth generation in Danny Boy's. This is Driftwood Siri Tomahawk, and one of Bud's claim to fame is he showed this stallion uh, and won in Sedalia, Missouri in 1974. He was the grand champion stallion. And uh, this stallion, his color and what Bud did with him, uh, driving him in parades and in cutters and stuff all across Minnesota in the St. Paul Winter Carnival for like eight years in a row, he really did a lot for POAs in Minnesota. And a lot of people, uh, I won't say cut their teeth, but got their start with Tomahawk Babies and through Bud Campbell in the 70s and even the 80s. A lot of, a lot of people, POA roads went through Bud and Bertie's uh, living room in the, the 70s and the 80s down in Rochester, Minnesota. And Rochester was a hot spot uh, for POA activity. So, and then I had all the relatives. I've mentioned this before, but you know, Danny Boy was a grand champion in 63, and then his son Tom Ox Big Creek was grand in 66. This is uh, young Doug Murfeld with MP's Big Creek's Jim Dandy, uh, Tomahawk's Big Creek's son. So third generation, he won grand in 71. And then, of course, Bud won grand in 74. So it was four generations of stallions, which is unheard of and has never even come close to being done again. So here's Danny Boy. Uh, Tomahawk's Big Creek's picture got lost in the cloud, but I had all four generations. So Bud tapped into that, and uh, there's a fancy shot of Bud. And... Uh, our guest from last week is actually in the background there, young uh, Susie Schultz on Ringo Starr. She's one of the flag banners right behind Bud, Bud driving there. And this was at a, a big parade, I think, in Minneapolis or somewhere, somewhere near the Twin Cities. And uh, that color and the way Tomahawk acted as a, young, as a short little stallion prancing around uh, really caught a lot of attention. And uh, so, and then here he is. We actually bought Tomahawk from Bud, when Bud kind of went more towards the Prince Fury, Freckles Fury, uh, he kind of knew, like a lot of people did, that uh, the more horse influence was coming in and it was going to go to 56. So um, he sold uh, Tomahawk, and that's my dad, Pat Rourke, holding him there. 
Uh, my dad's birthday is in two days, so I included that picture. Here I am as a little 10-year-old uh, holding little tomahawk. He wasn't very big. He was 50 inches or shorter, but he was sure a uh, loud color and a bundle of energy, a big package. Uh, so here's one of the tomahawk babies Bud uh, sold. Now, Bud and Bertie consigned a POA to the sale uh, for over 30 years. Uh, they only missed a couple sales. There was a few breaks. Bud had some health issues over the years. I believe he had two or three heart attacks, and he always had funny stories like, uh, you know, not a heart attack's not funny, but he made them. Bud, if you knew him, was a storyteller, and he had a vivid memory, and uh, he talked about, you know, winding a trailer down one time, trying to get a trailer hooked up, and then I think halter breaking a foal, and uh, when Nixon was elected one year, he had a heart attack, something like that. He was just a comedian, Bud. He was a very... A uh, very cool character in POAs. He used to, when Bertie would ask him to do something, sometimes he'd say, Bertie, you know, I walked halfway across Europe. So, because he, of course, was in World War II, he was of that generation. So, he always had uh, funny things to say. So, here's Campbell's Nicky that went to the Howard uh, Schmidt family in Kansas. He was one of the uh, Campbell's horses that stood as a stallion for a while. He was a son of uh, Tomahawk. And here's Campbell's Ms. Snowflake. Now, I concluded her because she was a full sister to a POA that got pretty well known in Minnesota with the Quas family, and that's Campbell's Eclipso, and here he is as a baby. Some of Bud's stuff, he kind of pushed the limit a little bit with a lot of app breeding, and even though Tomahawk was so short, you see this guy was a little over height as a baby, but he showed most of his life in Minnesota with the Quas family, and he was well known as a gamer. And here's a great picture here uh, of Lori holding on, Lori with her blonde hair, and that's her dad, Bob, uh, keeping her alive there on Campbell's Eclipso. And uh, he was a maniac in the games. He would, he would run and bounce up and down as fast as he would go straight out, but he was a very fast POA. And uh, like I say, the Quas had a big connection to him, and that's the same horse. He looks a lot better there on all four. He was actually kind of a pretty POA, pretty head and neck. And uh, he was a 79 model, so here he is as an 8-year-old. And like I say, just super fast. And that's Lori. I hope she's watching tonight. Lori Quas. And then, uh, so Bud, like I say, even though when he had Tomahawk and he had Hawkeye, he would keep daughters of them. And then he had a real nice mare named Campbell's Renee that came from uh, Ray Peets. And this would be a good time to say Ray Peets, Max Nebergall, and Bud Campbell were real close friends. They'd travel together, like to the show and big shows sometimes out to Colorado. They traveled the shows and the sale. And if there was anything special ever going on, like dispersals, the McLaren's dispersal in the 80s, and uh, different things like the Sharping Brothers when they'd have their exotic animal sale, those guys would uh, team up and hop in a camper and all go out. And uh, just great POA friends all around the same age. So, uh, And Bud used a lot of different stallions over the years. He inter introduced a lot of app stallions that no one else was breeding to. He always said that he found gold prints. I know Paul Passy, excuse me, was the first one to breed to gold prints, him and uh, Leonard Lewis. But uh, Bud said he'd found him. Of course, Bud was, you know, fairly familiar with Money Creek Ranches that was in Houston, uh, Texas, Houston, Minnesota, I mean, the big, the leopard capital of the world, they called their self, they own Prince Fury. Of course, they're the breeders of gold prints. But one of the other app stallions that Bud uh, was connected with, he bred to Peppy Will a couple times, and he was a son of Kaleida Will, of course, by the famous Kaleida. And this mare went on to do some stuff, Campbell, uh, Miss, Ms. Kaleida, and that's one of the years I think Bud was in the early 80s. Bud wasn't feeling too well. Um, and then Campbell's Kaleida, a lot of people called him Campbell's Mr. Kaleida. I think Bud did a lot of times. He really registered him as Campbell's Kaleida, full brother to Ms. Kaleida. He came the next year in 81, and there's Renee again and Peppy Will. Of course, he sold to uh, Iowa, and then he ended up with the Roth family in Colorado, real loud, colored POA. And this is kind of connecting into what you know tomahawk was loud like this he ain't even related to this horse and then campbell's dream catcher is not related to this horse but bud loved these loud patterns and i guarantee you he'd be a fan of laurie chrome's program because he loved producing these uh these patterns like that and the dark colors so this is i believe donna roth from colorado with uh campbell's Kaleida. and then here she is with her brother lance on the cover lance is on plot it's crusader 
and she's on uh, Campbell's Collider. That would have been like an, yeah, an 89 national champion with her. So one of the stallions Bud uh, moved on with from Tomahawk was Freckles Fury, and he was a grandson of Prince Fury. Uh, Bud fell in love with the horse Prince Fury, and I had three pictures of him. One or two of them was a little rare, and uh, two of them got ate up in the cloud, and only one's going to be on here tonight. But uh, Bud never owned Prince Fury. He was the contending bidder uh, when Money Creek sold him at Cannon Falls at the uh, Twin Cities sale there and uh, the Money Creek dispersal, and I believe Sheldak bought him, and uh, people couldn't believe that a pony breeder, I believe he sold for like 12 grand, and Bud was the contending bidder, and he, there's one of his vivid stories, he'd always tell how he would have kept bidding, but his ribs were hurting so bad from Birdie uh, hitting him in his ribs. Every time he'd bid, she would elbow him in the ribs, because they were uh, very, you know, kind of conservative a little bit with their money and stuff. They did well in life, but had their own business and some rental properties and stuff, but paying 12000 for a horse he was going to use to breed ponies uh, seemed like a big leap in faith. So, of course, Bud did breed some uh, Appaloosas, too, and he, he did breed to Prince Fury a lot in the POAs and raised some apps by him. Uh, here's another picture of Freckles Fury. He was short. He was really a short horse, if you see the cannon bones there. He was all Appaloosa. Bark and Tuck was a big stallion. That was his sire. And then the Prince Fury was on the bottom, was his grandsire on the bottom side. Uh, but this horse in person, of course, he was a bay, a vivid bay, and uh, he was a tank. He was a big, as you see that shoulder, he was a big husky POA, and it added some bulk to, to Bud's program. So we talked about... Uh, Quas, here's Lori showing, I think she's a three-year-old in this picture. They took Jill and bred Campbell's Jill to Freckles Fury, and Linda actually showed it in the Select Sire for Charity and took fourth. Uh, that year was QT McHugh won it with Wayne Latch. Doc Nemers was second with uh, Doc Slick Chick. Leonard Lewis from Minnesota had showed against this filly all year with Double Deck, who won the international. Uh, she was third, and then this one got in the money. Back then, the top four had big pictures in the magazine and stuff. So this was, uh, I think, Fury's Princess, they called her, uh, something like that, CJ's Fury's Princess, Camp, meaning Campbell's Jill. And, uh, of course, this, is, uh, this was one bred by the Quas, so out of Campbell's Jill. So Campbell's Foxy Lady, I don't have a picture of her, but she went on to be a, a great broodmare. You know, she was, uh, I believe, Erdman's had her, and she went to Missouri for a long time. Uh, she might not even be in the Hall of Fame. I know she was nominated, but uh, she became the mother of a lot of uh, famous POAs. And uh, like I say, the Erdman's got some good stuff out of her and uh, bred to Super Sun. And then later, Show Me, she had some Show Me POAs. And uh, Bud sold her as a yearling out in Indianapolis uh, for eight twenty-five. A lot of times, you know, Bud wouldn't get big money for his stuff, but uh, they'd go on to, to do well. And then later, he started getting good money for his Colts. Uh, this is another Freckles Fury. Uh, this is a Peterson Colt. I, you know, he had the Fleckies in Iowa, Reverend Peterson, and this was Flecky Prince Antar. Him and Bud were friends also, and uh, he bred to Fury's Rambo. I'll mention him later, and he also bred to uh, Freckles Fury and got that one. So Campbell's Twerp was another. Uh, there's Dewdrop Sassafras that I mentioned by the filly we seen Campbell's Dewdrop in Tomahawk. Dewdrop Sassafras was loud colored. I wish I would have found a picture of her. She's in a, with a kid dressed up as a cowboy with a little pistol next to a Western store. That was in the, the magazine as an ad. But Twerp went out to Pennsylvania. She was a little filly uh, by Freckles Fury. And here we have Campbell's Birdie. And of course, Campbell's Birdie, uh, Bud sold as a two year old uh, at the Wisconsin sale, Midwest sale. A lot of these good POAs went through the spring sales. And uh, Larry Gibson actually purchased this filly. And then Larry sold her uh, to the Dembski family, uh, Linda and Bob Dembski, for their daughter, uh, Kara. And uh, this is her. She was a nice-looking POA, of course. And they ended up uh, doing well. We're a great team in Wisconsin. And uh, they sent me, thank you for sending me about 12 pictures. I could only use about three of them. But she was a good-looking POA. You could tell she had uh, good... Uh, good structure and Freckles Fury was her sire so she had that big shoulder on her. Of course they raised some babies, uh, quite a few babies. They had a kiddo baby by her and then uh, many rusty babies. So uh, I know they're watching tonight Dembski's so 
Uh, I'm glad you got in and was able to watch this live. And there's your daughter with the nice mare. Like I say, they were a good team. They got some hardware and uh, awards there. At the That was at a Tulsa National Show in 1996. So Campbell's Birdie was, of course, she was named for Birdie Campbell. So, so over the years, the Minnesota... POAC, they kind of copied the Indianapolis club. Some other clubs did too, but Minnesota did a good job over the years. Lee Rupplinger was a big part of it, and uh, Joan Schultz and Joan Lewis for sure, uh, and many more too. Uh, but they would donate a POA. They'd either buy one or somebody would get one, and then they'd donate it. They'd have a 4-H giveaway, and uh, this was Campbell's Rock Bar was the one in 1991 was the Loud Leopard that was given away. So this is uh, actually JBJ's uh, Outback Jack, but it was bred by uh, the Caswells from Minnesota, Larry and Don. They purchased Campbell's Supergirl from Bud, and she was, a, uh, I think, a Prince Fury daughter, was bred to Super Son, and got uh, Campbell's Supergirl. She was a solid buckskin, and then uh, she ended up being bred to Bounce Back Jack to get this champion gilding here. Uh, the mare was bought in full at a spring sale by Jackie Guthrie. So that's the Campbell's connection on this one. So here's Prince Fury. And like I say, Bud fell for Prince Fury, and uh, he almost bought him. And uh, he, uh, when Sheldax had him, I don't think he did much uh, with him. But then when he went back to Minnesota, I think he was in Saginaw, I believe, was the name of the town, northern Minnesota. Uh, Bud bred to him many times. And uh, he, some of the stuff we're going to talk about tonight, of course, goes back to Prince Ferry. And uh, I had a bunch of pictures of him, three good pictures. Now, that picture I wasn't even going to use because I had two good profile shots, but I'm glad I kept that in because that's the only one that stayed. But one mare that uh, made a name for herself by Prince Ferry and again by Renee. So this filly here, Campbell's Ms. Ferry, would be a half-sister to Ms. Kaleida and... Campbell's Kaleida. So you see the loud color here. And Erdman sold this filly for, I believe, over seven grand. She either topped the sale or was tied for the, in, for the sale back in the 90s. This would have been one of the early Tulsa sales uh, when this mare uh, sold for so much money. And here's some colored photos of her. She was a, a fancy show mare, and you see that color. And here she is again. So, and this was an own daughter of Prince Fury. Campbell's Ms. Fury. And then here, uh, here's Julius Peterson again, Reverend Peterson from Iowa. He bred to Freckles Fury, as I said, and then he also bred to Fury's Rambo. I don't have a picture of Fury's Rambo tonight, but uh, Bud bred a Wee's Camp bred mare to Princess Fury and got a leopard Appaloosa that looked somewhat like Prince Fury. He was bigger, taller than him. He was probably 15 hands. Bud showed him and won some stuff. I believe he went to Canada, but Bud always wishes he would have named him Prince Rambo instead of Fury's Rambo, so it would have copied Prince Plotted. And then, of course, everybody calls him Prince Fury, but his real name was Princess Fury. But Bud went ahead and named this one Fury's Rambo, and uh, Rod, or Julius Peterson bred to him, bred a POA to him, and Bud had a couple POAs by him. Uh, Pixie was one of them. Campbell's Pixie was a Rambo daughter, and she ended up producing some stuff. So here's Flecky Mar Mariah Plotted. This was one of the Rambo daughters that Julius Peterson raised. So we're going back to the Quas connection again. Here's Lori Quas, and this is a mare they got from Bud Campbell. Wasn't a Campbell's bred. Uh, she came from, uh, she had Victor's breeding. She reminded me of Pokey Plotted a lot. And she was bred a little similar that way. And her name was Lucky Angel. And she plays a big part in tonight's story because she was in the pedigree of a lot of POAs we just looked at. And uh, she ended up, Lucky Angel was bred to Prince Fury. And the cross was this mare right here. And this is Campbell's Miss Flirt. Of course, this is Chuck Shackleton, a good breeder from uh, Iowa, him and Maxine. Of course, they have Doc's Rough and, uh, rough and Zip. The Rough and Tough Son, and this mare was a big part of their program for years. And uh, we're going to look at some of the babies she produced, and then we're going to go back to her most famous one. But when Bud bred her to Rusty Bars, she had Campbell's Rusty Lady. People might remember her from the sale. 
nice uh, blanketed filly. And then here's some of Chuck and Maxine's babies uh, they had out of this mare. And they had quite a few. And I apologize, I don't know all these names. It'd be Clay Hills. These would be all Clay Hill babies out of Campbell's Miss Flirt. So then, of course, Bud bred Campbell's Miss Flirt to his young stallion he had in the late 80s. In early 90s, he went back to Ray and got a Driftwoods uh, stallion. And this is Driftwood's Mr. Music. He was a grandson of Double Tough. His sire was a, a solid son of Double Tough. And when Bud crossed this stallion to the mare we just seen, Campbell's Miss Flirt, he ended up with Campbell's Zippo. And that really, Bud had been breeding for 30 some years then when Zippo was born, but the Zippo babies really rejuvenated Bud's program. And uh, he started, I don't know if he showed too much anymore after that. He did show Zippo uh, because Zippo was at the world show and uh, I was lunging him. He had never been lunged and Bud wanted him to just settle down a little bit. So I went and started playing with him by the end of the hour or so or less. I had him lunge in both directions. But he was a cool stallion. Of course, he was uh, owned by Nikki. We're going to bring Nikki on here a little later and uh, she's going to be a big part of uh, the Campbell story so but Campbell Zippo of course Bud had I don't know 40 or 50 some babies by him at least and they were all colored I don't think Bud ever had one solid full by Zippo which few spots supposed to do that but we all know they have some solids at birth so uh, Melissa's saying most of our first POAs were by Campbell's Mr. Rambo well hold that thought Melissa because we're going to see him towards the end of the show so I'm glad you mentioned his name of course he was with uh, Irene Nelson at uh, West Wind POA. So we are going to talk about him, and he's related. He's a son of Campbell Zippo. So um, before we get Nikki on here and talk about her program, with uh, the, she ended up buying Campbell Zippo because she had great success with Campbell's Dreamcatcher. Well, Campbell's Dreamcatcher's mother is pictured in this picture, a rare picture of her. Bud really loved this mare. She was a short black quarter horse mare. Bud always called her his, his quarter mare, his black quarter mare, and he raised a lot of babies, at least 12 babies uh, out of this mare, and I got most of them written down. She had uh, six fillies and six colts. The first one she had that I know of was Campbell's Tough Miss, and that's this loud-colored leopard Bud's holding, uh, which is on the right of this picture, and he consigned her to the international sales a yearling, and then that's her full brother. And they were both by Doc's Dazzling Dude that the Heinrichs family had at the time. And uh, I believe them were the first two POA babies uh, out of this mare. So here's the Tough Miss write-up. She sold for $1,000. And he mentions it's good advertising here, bud, with both, both foals and showing off the mare as well. So, and here's Birdie. I'm glad I got a picture of Birdie here. And this is Tough Jet. He sold as a baby, Campbell's Tough Jet. So he would have been Sonny's first Mrs. second POA foal that I know of. And uh, like I say, this mare ended up making a big name for herself and had really helped change uh, Bud and Birdie's program. And then here is Campbell's Rusty Leo in 92. Now, in 91, she had a kiddo tough baby and she was born solid and she ended up being she had some a few little white spots tracy will probably chime in on this but she had a few little white spots and she had some modeling and i was there the day an inspector came i won't say any names but he came out to bud's place to inspect her and she was a spitting image of the quarter mare she just had a little bit of modeling and a few white spots and he left id papers on her at six and didn't uh, didn't change her papers and she ended up being the mother to a few spot So I know she was colored like Tracy would say and she did have like five or six white spots And she was modeled up and she really should have and she was a daughter of kiddo tough a few spots So she really should have got her papers uh, But she stayed solid and that's the one POA bud kept out of this Mary sold all the foals mainly as babies They went on to really put him on another level in the POA pro breeding program but he kept that mare and when you'd go out there they'd keep two different colored halters on them bud and birdie one was red i think and one was purple because uh they would be they look so alike that 
you would uh, you could hardly notice them. I mean, the kiddo daughter just looked like a 56-inch quarter horse. She looked just like her mother, even in the head. The mare wasn't the best-headed mare in the world, and kiddo didn't really fix the head, but he didn't hurt the muscles or anything. The length of croup, everything was almost identical. And Bud kept both those mares side by side for years and, uh, and bred them to Campbell Zippo, both of them. So, but anyway, this is the snowstorm baby in 92. Uh, this was Campbell's Rusty Leo. And then he went back to Dazzling Dude for 93, and this name ended up being changed, Campbell's Missy Gaybar, but Bud was just using the pedigree. If you look down there, Sonny's first Mrs. Mother was a registered court horse named Missy Gaybar, and then, of course, her daughter was Sonny's first Miss because they bred Sonny to a mare named Missy. So, But anyway, this filly ended up being changed to Campbell's Ruby Bar. L at least they kept the Campbell's prefix on there. And here's uh, young Maggie Lagrasso. This is one of the junior ponies she showed and had success with. And this was Campbell's Ruby Bar. I showed against her as a baby uh, when Bud showed her. He was still showing. That would have been in 93 she was a baby. He was still showing once in a while then. So this is the 94 filly by or out of Sonny's first miss. And this would be Campbell's Lady Die. And again, he went back to Snowstorm for this one. You kind of see that snowstorm color there with the mane and tail. And uh, that would be the last foal that the mare had that wasn't by Campbell Zippo. Uh, after that, he bred her to Campbell Zippo every year. And that's going to lead us to our next guest tonight. And I'm about ready to call uh, Nikki. So, Nikki, please be ready. This gives everybody a chance to, I'm going to take me off the screen while I do this. Gives everybody a chance to go get some popcorn. Won't take me too long to dial. I hope everybody's enjoying the show tonight. I was thinking it's going to be two, two and a half hours. Lori and I talked for about an hour, and now I'm going to talk to, about Campbell's for an hour or more. Of course, Nikki's going to talk about some of her program uh, connected with the Campbell's and what she did with Campbell's Dream Finder. So. Hello. Hello. You got it on the first ring. I'm good. I was paying attention. <laughs> good, you're paying attention. I'm going to take a drink of water. This is a two-bottle show tonight, two bottles of oh. water. Oh, okay. So how are you doing, Nikki? I'm doing great. Tim. Good. How I, are you? Good. I haven't talked to you live in years, but um, I know. we talk on, thank goodness, for Facebook and uh, Messenger and all that stuff. So uh, hopefully everybody can hear you. Tracy, give me a yes or no if you can hear Nikki, before we get into all this, uh, we got a lot of history to talk about. You've been enjoying the show, Nikki? Oh, I love it. Oh, it's good. So good tonight. It's always <laughs> good, but it's even better tonight. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Can you tell some of those colors that I showed with the DKs? Boy, they go right back to Dreamcatcher and Zippo, and it's it's eerie almost. So. I know. They're yeah. the most beautiful colors. They are. Them. They are. So I have a picture of you here. As a, I guess you're still a kid in this picture, right? That was my last year. Last year. Yeah. Okay. I was at that national show. You know, we were at several national shows and just didn't even see each other, I think, till like I 95. Know. But And then we met each other. But uh, what we was it? Like, you were like strangers passing. Strangers <laughs> passing, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what was the name of this POA? Um, this was one of Sharon Beck's. Her name was Barquabo's Latest Fashion. Okay. She, she was her kid's show pony for all of her children and then she used her pretty extensively as a broodmare and just she lent her to me for my last year of youth because she was such a an awesome all around she could you know do western pleasure she could do right. english jump and running was not her favorite thing but she would do it if you made her <laughs> right i got a little story to tell you we went out to eat one time uh jackie uh guthrie and bob warns and myself and i you were there at the show and i said is that one of your daughters and i thought i'd seen you over the years you know and he said oh no she's one of the adopted ones he said <laughs> he, <laughs> said, he said sharon's adopted kids over the years you know not really but you know and then you'd end up go showing with them and and uh, that was cool so oh yes he had a string of kids because he had ponies everywhere and if if there was a kid that didn't have a pony, she made sure you had one to ride. Right. 
So I'm jumping the gun a little bit here, but you ended up buying uh, Campbell's Dreamcatcher, and here's a great picture with him as, uh, I believe, probably a yearling, and you and your mom, right? Yeah, yeah. You know? It was actually two. But it was, like, early. Was early, like early, yeah. Two-year-old year. Yeah, yeah. cuz I got a full-body picture of him coming up later in the show that'll show it. Yeah, he's, he's probably two. What was your mom's name? Carolyn. Carolyn, okay. Yeah. All right, and she was a big influence in your life, too, so... I drug her everywhere <laughs> with me. She yeah. loved to go to the horse shows and she loved to watch right. all the people. The sale was one of her favorite things. Well, then when you start having so much success with your dreamy babies and him himself, I'm sure she really enjoyed that. So. Oh, she definitely did. Yeah. So did you know Bud and Birdie Campbell before you purchased Dreamcatcher? I did not. No. Um, okay. I, I met them when the year that we bought Dreamy. In 95. Mm -hmm. And then we just stayed in touch after that. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. But, you know, like most breeders, just like we were talking with Lori, you feel uh, really honored if somebody gets your stuff and promotes it because a lot of times stuff will just go. They could be just as good as Dreamcatcher, and he might have went to a a trail riding program, you know what I mean? And no one would have ever heard of him. So, you know, someone who would have outbid you and went to an open show program or whatever, you know? So that's why as a breeder, you feel fortunate when somebody goes and campaigns your stuff. So definitely. You know, I agree. I've, right. I've felt that from both ends. I felt that when I bought from people and showed their horses or when people bought my babies, right. Showed or didn't show them. Right. I'd even start pricing stuff different. You know, I created the leading sires and breeders list. So I would, are you going to show? You know, they'd be like, how much? And I wouldn't say, it's like how I do now as a car salesman. You know, well, what are you going to do with it? You know, are you going to go to the national show? And then I might be, you know, heck, I'd give stuff away sometimes if I knew they were going to go do something with it. So I agree. Right. So here you guys are. He's a yearling and he was reserved grand as a yearling, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. He was. He really wasn't. He was a really nice looking yearling, but he didn't, you know, he wasn't all bloomed out like he ended up being. He was kind of leggy as a yearling. Yeah. Mr. Respect won that year. Yeah. Mr. Respect. Yeah. 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 He won and he repeated. He won in 95 and then again in 96. He'll be a big top. See, I'm so glad you're a guest tonight because you're leading me into the a future episode, the hardship clause episode in a few weeks. Mr. Respect yeah. will be a big part of that show. So. So yeah, here he is a, now when, uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I was just honored to win my class and right. then be junior and then to even be considered for grand or reserve was right. just a dream. And then when I got reserve, I was blown away. <laughs> right. And then here we fast forward to 2001 and he's a little different animal. He's all matured and husky and he did go on and win grand that year. He so. did. Yeah. He did. I, um, he had an injury to his foot. Oh, I forget what it was. Probably a year to ninety-seven. I think he stepped on a fencing nail, and we almost lost him. He he had um, a really a bad infection. He had to have surgery, and he was only maybe going to be breeding sound okay. at, at best. And when we took him home, we did all the rehab work. And we did, and of course, Brad was his barrier. And so uh, we just spent so much time bringing him back. And he was, you know, rideable and breeding sound, but we weren't sure if we could ever show him again. And my dream was always to take him to the nationals again and try to go grand. And right. we just worked really hard at keeping him sound and healthy. And the, then that year, my dream came true. So. Right. Dream came through, no pun intended. <laughs> I know. Campbell's dream. Came, and we're going to talk about what Bud did with the with the full siblings, with the names in a little while, but we're going to get through some of your program first. Now, just so you know and the people out there know, we're not going to, it's not just the Nikki program. You know, someday I'll probably have you back on and talk really in depth, you know, but tonight we're honoring uh, Lori's program and then Bud's, you know, of course. So, But you did so much with this horse and, and then, of course, with your connection with, Sharon and stuff too with some of those mares and I remember this baseball card you gave me one of these cards and uh, <laughs> I still have it I think so that's the picture now I don't know if you can see it but it's from yep. 98 yeah so yeah we were at a horse expo we were on the stallion alley they called it at the time and um, a lady came through and just said your horse is beautiful he has amazing color and I do um, I do you know 
horse baseball card. Can I make a card of your horse? And I was like, sure. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so um, we gave her his picture and then made the cards and gave them to us. So All right. It was pretty cool. And then you had information on the back and stuff, just like a baseball card. So, yeah, yep, I definitely, definitely remember that. So, so here's uh, the same year when you won grand. I think, uh, did Festivus Maximus win as a baby too? Max won yeah. as a windling, yeah. and then he came back as a yearling. And won, and won grand, right. And then won grand. That, yeah. that was him as a baby. Yep. Okay. Is this his mother with him? Or? Yep, that's Julie's Tough Promise. Okay. And we had, um, I believe we had two sets of mares and bulls that year. Okay. And um, so this was Karen and her sister, Talinda. They showed Max and, and Promise for us. And Brad and I showed... Uh, dual sensation and the perfect dream i'm pretty sure that was the same year if it wasn't oh no you know what it was we had a, uh we had a different that was in 2002 so in this year we had um oh that yearling i won with her as a yearling for sharon um, right that big gruula mare yeah yeah, a gruula cult. yeah yep, i that remember was, that yep yeah. so we, we had a different set yep so they won and we ended up like third or fourth right i can't her name escapes me for some reason. That's all right. Time time goes. It's escaping me, too. So I'm not what I used to be with pedigrees. So. And <laughs> here, here he is, a little older. This is, I always liked his name, Festivus Maximus Dream. So, uh, oh, he was so much fun. Yeah. Oh, um, Dooley uh, Fancy, something mighty fancy or something. Right. She was a mag, Magnolia girl. Right. As well. Um, yeah, that's why I want to do a show. I need Miss Sharon to come on here one of these days and talk about, of course, Dual oh, Plotted and Magnolia yeah. Girl was such a great man. A lot of people don't know about her now. A lot of people still remember the name Dual Plotted. And, of course, Dreamcatcher, that helped him, too, because a lot of his foals were out of Dual Plotted daughters, you know, yep, but yep. Uh, especially early on. But, yeah, hopefully somebody can put a bug in uh, Miss Sharon's ear and, this is one of my favorite catalogs, first of all, because I was new to the board, and I did a speech on the board about the poor catalogs. Remember, the, the one was yellow, Senator, on there, and then the one with you was a bluish purple. It was black and white, but it was Dreamcatcher was such a beautiful horse, and then it was a black and white picture with, you know, kind of bleeding through ink, and it just, so this was the first colored catalog ever. And, uh, and I loved it. Yep, yeah, I loved it. Some people were mad at me because they said it's costing more money now. And I said, well, it's still, it just looks so good. And then you win with a loud colored yearling, of course. He's just a yearling in this picture. So you went yep. back to back with father and son, 2001 yep. and two. So that was cool. And uh, Yeah, that was so exciting, I swear. Right. Um, just greeting him, you know, having the mayor, having the stallion, greeting him. Oh, the Max got his name because he was born on Super Bowl Sunday when the Ravens won the Super Bowl, and they called the Ravens party the Festivus Maximus. Oh, okay. So, so we had to name him after that because, you know, we were Pennsylvania, but practically Maryland. So. Right. I didn't um, know if it was because of Gladiator, you know, Festivus Maximus. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it nope, was the it party. Was, okay. It was Super Bowl uh, Sunday, and right. it was snowing, and it was cold. Okay. And he, he was a February beast. Right. So. And he was short, too, so he could have been born yep. in January. So could have been. some of these pictures are not going to be in order. Here's Taryn again, but most of these will be Dreamcatcher babies now. So Yeah, but that's a zippy baby. Out oh, of, that's uh, a zippy baby. Okay. Yep, that one's out of Millie, uh, Truly okay. One in a Million. Truly One yep. in a Million. She was a beautiful mare that Taryn showed for years. And yep. Uh, yep. this was, okay, so this is a brother to Dreamcatcher. So, but still yep. by Campbell Zippo. So. So you had this would be a good time to mention. So you had so much success with Campbell's Dreamcatcher, and then you and uh, the Campbells became friends and stuff. That you ended up getting the sire right when Bud and Birdie was kind of planning to slow down a little bit in their pr breeding program because that's the last day and they had was Zippo, and uh, you ended up getting him right. Yep, Bud yeah. and Birdie were talking about getting out of you know breeding. Right. And my, my friends Linda and Richie Arnold. You know, I love breeding to Dreamy, and they had talked about because they had a lot. They did Appaloosas, and they were thinking about getting a few spot. And so Richie and Linda and Brad and I went in on partnership and bought Zippy and brought him back. You okay. know, to my place. Right. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So here's and believe a... it or not, as an older stallion, like we did so much stuff with him. He was so 
he was just like dreaming. You could just do anything with him. Right. We broke him. We rode him around the farm. And right. We just had so much fun with him. Right. Well, you know, Bud, I don't want to, you know, put a bad light on this or anything because this is honoring his program. But in the early days with some of the Hawkeye babies and especially the Tomahawk babies, the Tomahawk babies through Danny, but it was so fast, but a lot of them were hot. Like I showed that picture of Eclipso rearing up yep. and stuff, and they were, they were hard to handle. And when he got that quarter mare, and I think Mr. Music was a good disposition too, but that quarter mare was just such a calm mare. And then a lot of those babies were, you know, just sound minds, and that really changed his program. And it was good because Bud and Birdie were getting up in their, you know, 80s or close, so, you know, they needed some calmer babies, so. They definitely did. Uh, I always like this colt. This is, uh, but definitely a dream sickle, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, Terry Trout, uh, formerly Terry Troutman, bred Total Treat to Dreamy, and then she had this old colt. She had this one. And they decided to sell him, and I think it was before they named him, and we loved him, so we bought him, and um, and of course then we named him. And then you uh, named him, yeah. Yeah. And to- yes. Total Treat was born on my place, on my f- mom and dad's place. I was 14. She was born in the same full crop as Kiddo Tough and Ruby Tough Dots and Double Shot. And we wasn't the breeders of her, but we'd bought a mare, a straw mare from Jackie uh, Blazer at the time, Jackie Guthrie. And she foaled that leopard filly, and dad named her Total Treat. And then yeah. she became the mother to, it's a small world, you know, how things go, especially in the POAs, but. Yeah, yep. and, it, and we called him Shorty because he was short, Yeah, and he was, I mean, not a big-bodied baby, you know, not a big-bodied pony, but, boy, if I would have had a, a small little band of quarter horse mares, I probably would have kept them. We, I didn't the Holtz buy him, I think. Yep. Out in, uh, yep. I think Giro and Holtz, it was a partnership in Oklahoma. And then, of yep. course, he had a full really early on, uh, definitely a dream to see. You yep. know that uh, they have uh, posy bots had and and yep. uh, crystal or what's her name? Less, I always get the girls mixed up. But anyway, Elizabeth. Yeah. Elizabeth, yeah, yeah. Yep. So I got I moved on because I got a lot of pictures. So you help me out with some of these. <laughs> yep, this is the elusive dream. This is one of Sharon's um, that she bred one of her dually mares to dreamy and got okay. this. This is a small mare. We won um, small mares at the international. But... Right. Yeah. She she would uh, probably do well in the small mares today. So. Oh yeah, she was a super fancy little mare. Just right. Fun. Li- I broke her out too. I think you know Sharon. She takes them to the sale and then she never sells them. That might have been <laughs> the case with one of maybe this silly too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, she could have. Yeah, she used to want to just to kind of appraise them. She used Doug Sarl as a oops. I hit the button. Doug Sarl as an appraiser, but that was yep. fine. Uh, at least we had good stuff in the catalog. So. Yep. So who are you holding here with her in this picture? So that's her full sister, um, and we called her Baby Bug for the life of me. I can't remember her registered name, but we won Mare and Foal, uh, or I mean Produce the Dam for this show. Right. Uh, and then we also won Get the Get a Sire. Okay. So, uh, the Elusive Dream won Small Mares. The Yearling Philly, I think, was like third or fourth in the Yearling Philly class that's in the picture with her. And, of course, the Yearling Philly is as big as the small, you know, mare. Right. Um and then, and then we did um, the Get a Sire class, and I won yearling geldings with a, a spotted leopard gelding. All right. That's the same show. All right. Okay, so now we're in 2006 in Des Moines. Yeah, so that's going to be um, uh, Denise Becker had a dually mare, and um, out of that, Terry Strauss's Royal Shamrock. And um, this little guy here, we called him Starbucks. <laughs> um, I think his name, I think his registered name was NOTF Coincidental Dreams, or maybe okay. no, that was another one. Um, okay, I can't remember. But this we called him Starbucks. He won, of course. Um, you know, he won here. I, I think he might have won the nationals. It could have been maybe second or third though. But he won overall for the whole year. We we showed Starbucks pretty extensively, right. and he was a fun little one. He didn't get much bigger than fifty three. Right, and NOTF was your prefix, right? Yep. Nick of time. Nick of time. Yep. 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 I remember that. So Tracy, of course, is talking about the amazing dream because that's the grand dam to her. She's like, let's not forget. Which she always jumps the gun. So, and I probably <laughs> don't have a picture. I think my dad picked up the Amer- the amazing dream from you. Yeah. And Halder. Yep. yep. Because his truck 
our truck broke down. Of course, people that don't know this, we were commercial haulers. You know, we were we hauled a lot of PO. We probably hauled more POAs than any hauler in the country. I'm sure of that. So, but we headed uh, to Iowa with her to get to uh, Leo and Leanne Hawk's yep. place, and the truck broke down. And Leo came out and met my dad in the middle of the night and, and got that mare because he was stuck in some town probably for a couple days. So. You know, when you put 500,000 miles on trucks, they sometimes the transmissions or the engines, and I always remember that story. Leo came out and, and got her. So, and then, of course, she became yep. a big part of their program, crossing with uh, with First Impulse. She had quite a few few spots, you know, by yep. First and, Impulse. And then... And the, she's a full sister to Festivus Maximus, so... She's a full sister to Festivus Maximus. Okay, that's good yep, to the know. Amazing the Amazing Dream. The Amazing yep. Dream, yep. Yep, so... It touches a lot of programs. So who's this yep. leopard here you're holding in? Yep, so Ofer. that's a polka dot dream. Okay. Um, that, that's, we leased a mare from, oh gosh, do you remember Ed and Lisa, somebody from Pennsylvania? They lived in a weird, really weird town. They had two boys that showed. Um, uh, yeah, didn't they move to Michigan? Yeah, and yeah. she had a little, like a little, uh, Flaxen mane and tail mare that she bought at the sale one year from Marcy. Back. From Marcy yeah. Merrill. Yeah. Yep. yep. Oh, so I might say that mare's name if you <laughs> if you push me. I know. Right I can't think of it <laughs> off the top of my head, but that's the, the dam of this one. So when we leave, uh, okay. Um, from Lisa for a year, and then we got we called him Spider. Um, so little Spider here, he wasn't so little anymore. He, he got pretty good. I mean, she was only fifty three inch mare, and we didn't think he, he'd get so big, but he was right up there. Right. Um, but okay. when he was born, he kind of, I always try to give him the nickname when they're born. So when he <laughs> stood up for the very first time, he hopped sideways about three times, like kind of like a spider will hop. Right. And I was like, we just got to call him Spider. <laughs> so, so, that's cool. Yeah. So that's Craig, Craig was their last name. Tracy just put yeah, it. Yeah. And Craig, that mare yeah. was, I think she was uh, a daughter of Tough Whirlwind or something like that is what she was. Something. She yep. was a cute little thing. Yep. Thought, yeah, and flax and mane and tail. I remember that yep. for sure. So. And then Michelle Towson bought Spider for her daughter Logan as a yearling. And okay. then a, uh, Amy Strawbridge, Reineke formerly, she trained him for Michelle. And they, you know, rode with Michelle, or Amy for years. And then they sold him, and I think he went out west somewhere, they told me. And those people still love him and have him. Okay. All yep. right. So this is um, out of Denise Becker's mare, the Shamrock mare, the dual plotted Shamrock mare. And okay. He, he is a full sibling to that one we called Starbucks with the little, right. little lacy frosty blanket. Okay. Um, and we so we took him to the sale. I don't think we sold him. I think I brought him home and sold him privately <laughs> to somebody. Um, but he was a nice little gelding too. You know, he kind of reminds you of the dual plotted. You know. Flash, oh, yeah. you know, dreamy style. So right. Of course, Campbell of Zippo, reading. I mean, he's the same color. So, yeah, he kind of yep. reminds me of that, too. But they had that same headset. A lot of them did. So, yep. yeah. And he was just easy. I mean, he sat on and rode them, you know. Like, he didn't really have to work very hard at it. They were right. easy. So, here's when you won Get a Sire for Dreamy, I think. Right? In 04? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's the, that's the um, produce of damn on the right, you know, this is the mare. Right. And then we added spider in. Spider in to get the get us. Yeah. You yep. always know who's having a really good show when you get to the breeders' classes and they start winning either mare and yeah. foal or produce because those horses won during the day, probably. So. I feel like I won it at another show, too, but quite honestly, I can't remember. I think you did. I, yeah. I think Dream, uh, dream Catcher won twice. So here's yeah. the perfect dream. And if this baby showed today, not only would he probably win the class, but he'd be up there, you know, for like junior. Because we had a baby win grand a few years ago, first time ever. Yeah. And uh, because people just ain't hauling age stallions as much, or, you know, or their performance bred more. So sure. but this guy was a knockout baby, wasn't he? Yeah, oh yeah. 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 And, and of course, he was at a dual sensation who won as a three-year-old right. uh, in Michigan in yeah. uh, Detroit, and then, of course, we brought them together. They won the Marinfold class here as they well. They won the Marinfold, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I gave you that picture, but... um. Is, uh, yep. did Sharon own, the, Miss Sharon own this one? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. She, she kept him, it. didn't she, for quite a while? 
He did. Uh, we were partners on him for a while, and okay. then uh, we, we put him in a, a hunter sale, actually, um, and then we didn't sell him, of course. <laughs> you know. Here and he then, is with the with the uh, bridle, yeah. So this might have been yep. a picture for that, yeah. Yep. And yeah. then uh, I think her her granddaughter showed him for a while, and then they sold him to a local family that needed a pony. So. All right. And one of the nicest things about all these ponies, you can see, they have the nicest tails. I mean, I never had to work at Dreamy having a nice tail. He just did. Right. Zippo had a great tail. All I, mean, I don't think I had one Dreamy baby that didn't have, you know, just a nice tail. Right. It was just well, so, there's a lot of horse blood in him. You know, even Zippo had a lot of, he had Appaloosa blood in him. But then, of course, Dreamy was half quarter horse, so. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. So while you're looking at this picture, Tracy, of course, she comments a lot. So she's saying, she's talking about dual plotted, how he keeps the size down, which is funny because his mother was an Appaloosa, but she was a short Appaloosa. You know, she was yep. Ruth Picoy's famous mare that she was the foundation of her later program. You know, she'd been in POAs 20 years or more when she got that mare. But uh, I had a picture of Dual Plotted on my uh, Facebook group this week. Uh, you've probably seen him, but he was a trivia question on there. So I found it in the state uh-huh. news. He was. You can find stuff in the old magazines in the state news. You'll see pictures of babies just born because people sent them in and stuff. Of course, back then you couldn't just take a picture with your phone and text it to somebody. You literally had to take a shot of it and then get it developed and then send it in the mail to someone. <laughs> so, I know, the old days. The That's old days, sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is um, Dream Connection, I believe. This was Linda and Richie Arnold out of the Kilo Connection. The Kilo right? Connection, Mary, yeah. So that and we was... called him Tarzan. <laughs> Tarzan, yeah. Yeah, I remember Tarzan for sure because I always liked mm-hmm. Kilo Connection too, so. So he this was a is lot a, of fun to show. Oh, I bet, yeah. This is a classic picture here. There's a lot of world trophies here in Connecticut. So all these stallions in one yep. picture. So yep. uh, who's, who's holding Zippo here? So that's, you know, my amazing late friend, Cindy Hallett. Okay. And then I have um, Dream and then Crystal, Crystal. Smith. Yep. That uh, has Shorty. Yep. I know Crystal yep. real well, so yep. And uh, yep, this is, I always like this picture. So, uh, Dreamy's almost looking like he's a little ticked that there's other stallions in the. <laughs> <laughs> Zippo's just kind of looking just, chill. Know. Yeah. And, Zippo's just happy to be there. He's like, hey. He's right. Here. And Crystal <laughs> looks like she's, you know, got her hands full because he's young. And, oh, yeah. yeah. He, was a, he was a little terror sometimes. Yeah. But for the most part, he was good. He was a good boy. But once in a while, you know, they're up for days getting ready. They're sitting right. in stalls at horse shows. And, you know, they don't get out much. And you want them to have that little bit of flair when they go in the oh, ring. Oh, for sure. So, so this is um, three generations when, right here, right? Yep. 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 Campbell's That's Zippo, true. Campbell's Dreamcatcher, and then uh, a Dream Sickle. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's a good picture. So, well, I hope you stick around because now I'm gonna, I'm kind of gonna talk about some of the other stuff out of Bud's mare, out of his quarter mare. So, um, all right. So, uh, of course, Dreamfinder be- or Dreamcatcher. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the name Dreamfinder on the screen. Dreamcatcher became so famous and was so beautiful that uh, when Bud kept having babies, he just kept doing that that name even though they weren't related to the appaloosa dream finder but he just put that in as his name and the next year campbell's ms dream finder uh, was born and bud did very well with these babies at the sale you know thanks a lot in part to what you were doing uh with yeah with dream catcher but uh, so this was the 96 baby a loud colored filly and then I don't think she had a full in 97 she didn't miss many years i think she only maybe missed one year but this is Campbell's dream maker. And of course he went on, he was a stallion for a little while and he went on to be a gilding. And he's still, I think right down here in Edmond, uh, he's yeah. loud colored. He's got more white on him a little bit than, uh, than dream catcher, maybe, you know, more vivid, but, uh, he didn't quite have the build his full brother had, but he definitely made a name for himself too. So that yeah, was, I feel like he was a little more refined than yeah. Dreamy was when it came to muscle, but he was so beautiful. He and was. Jennifer Dillard showed him. Some Jennifer, D- yep, she she had him for sure, and he was so flashy with the he had the the lightning marks and stuff and some few socks and yep. Well, then 
In 99, Campbell's Dream Chaser, he, he put that dream name in there for sure. Uh, and I think he sold him for 2000 at the sale. I know he did. It's written right there. And I don't know who ended up with this colt. Somebody might mention it or what he ever did. But he was just more of a traditional leopard, mm -hmm. Dream Chaser was. And then towards the end, I think 2000 was getting close to the end for Bud and Birdie. And uh, I remember talking to them for sure in 99 a lot, and then in 2000, and they were they were slowing down. And I don't remember what year Bud passed away, but it wasn't much later than this. It was, you know, it was in the early 2000s, I think. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I'm not sure. Right. I have a letter from Bud. He wrote me this nicest letter um, when, about showing, his, showing Dreamy and how much he really enjoyed, you know, me right. showing him and all the accolades that he got right yep and then this was a rare one here that was sorrel you know it wasn't uh bay or brown or black and this was the last one i think campbell's dream fantasy and of course this was a colt again and uh, he always wrote about his quarter man there if you notice in the comments she did it again <laughs> this year's oh. dream colt uh from our quarter yep. mare. that's he always would tell people his quarter mare is quarter mare and uh yeah so that yeah maybe somebody will remember where where these guys went of course they don't always stay in poa families or sometimes something happens to them you know just like you mentioned Dreamcatcher could have missed his show career you know as a young horse you still would have made him a good sire uh, but luckily you got him back in the ring so um, i do have a funny story about that quarter mare yeah let's hear it yeah so we were in it was the year Jimmy went reserve in Tulsa as a yearling, and um, Maggie Lagrasso had Ruby, right? Um, right. Ruby Bar. I know and... where you're going with this story because <laughs> I was one of them. I was one of them that was told straighten people out. But go ahead, tell your story. I, you know, for the life of me, I don't know why I didn't think the rule was the mayor had to be a POA <laughs> when going produce the dam. But I didn't know that at the time, and apparently neither did um, Jane Corn or any of the other people that, uh, you know, were in the camps of the two folks that I was with. And so we entered Dreamy and Ruby Bar in the Produce the Dam class, right. and we won it. <laughs> <laughs> and then not too long after we had our win picture taken, we sadly had to turn over our win to whoever was second place because or however they reconfigured it because produce the dam has to be a poa but <laughs> right but, but bud actually won it with his quarter mare right one. a quarter <laughs> horse can't win a poa award which is ironic now because there's horses showing you know in their own classes at our congress but yeah it's you can't win tracy never heard that so i remember i was flipping out i was at home but i heard it a lot you know basically somebody called me and said a quarter mare just won won the class and I said that can't happen you know? I know and I was walking him through I wasn't on the board yet but I might have been Lynn or somebody which he knew it couldn't happen either but uh you know it was yeah. somebody that was a student of the rules and I'm just going you know that he, they can't do it you know that's going to come back they can't and, and so right. yeah but it was a funny story that's just like I know somebody tried to put four in a get a sire one time because he was bragging because he had four foals by his stay in there and it's like you can't you know it's for three you know there's you know some people yep. could put nine in there but uh, yeah so that's that is i'm glad you told that so i remember that definitely uh the and day. that was just my innocence you know right. i was just naive i didn't know any well you had two poas and you knew they were by the same or out That's of the, the same mare. mare. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was like, hey, produce Dan, let's do it. <laughs> All right. All right. That's funny. So here uh, I alluded to this mare earlier, the mother to this colt, Campbell's Supergirl. She was a little buckskin uh, mare, and uh, she was a cute little mare, Super Sun and Fury's Princess, of course, was a Prince Fury mare. But Campbell's Super Kid, he sold him. They consigned so many to the sale. Nikki, it was just every year they had one or two in the sale. You know, a lot of times two. I think the most yep. they ever sold was three. But I went back and looked. 1969 was the first year Bud and Birdie consigned anything to the sale. And then I believe 2000 was the last year. And they missed a few years, but boy, not many. You know, when Bud was probably sick or something. But they that's a lot of years, you know, consigning stuff uh, to the sale. So. And they were always really well handled too you know for being yeah. an older 
couple. They're right. For, the babies were easy to handle. And they and weren't your t- traditional backyard breeders. They kind of were because Bud's property started getting ate up by houses. He ended up living right in town. But when he started, he was on a big hill in Rochester, way in a kind of a scenic place. And then people started buying lots around him and houses encircled his pasture you know, at the end, but, you know, he'd have four or five mares and one or two stallions for years, you know, so he wasn't just the two mares, you know, and hauled them out to get bred. He was a breeder and uh, right. yeah, and, and he was older. I mean, when I met him, he was a senior citizen, you know, and that was in right. the eighties. So he always had that white shock of hair and he'd take his comb and, you know, would be combing his hair and, and, uh, he always had a cool story and his house was so immaculate. He was the first the first house I was ever in that he had really nice artwork. He really liked uh, Remington and uh, Charles Russell was his favorite, I believe. But he had lights over the pictures. And when I was like a teenager, a kid, it wasn't hitting me. You know, I knew it was cool, but now I realize he was an interior decorator and he was big into that, you know. But I'd never been, I haven't still been to too many places that have lights hanging over, just like in a museum. You know, they were staged in his living room and in his hallway would have really cool pictures and yeah, just a unique guy. And of course, Bertie, my mom and Bertie Campbell became fast friends and uh, they were, she was such a cool, I got a Bertie story. You know, Bud was kind of a maniac sometimes and he was backing up his truck. We were at their place and maybe the motorhome and Bertie standing on the tongue of the trailer giving him directions <laughs> all of a sudden bang bud hits the the tongue wait and she goes rolling in a somersault like a, a <laughs> junior high girl you know and she was 70 <laughs> something then and my dad was like cussing at bud what's wrong with you and she just got up and went on started yelling at him and but they were a cute couple and uh, they really were yeah so i'm just showing some of the babies they consigned over the years i know this one went on i think he was in colorado for a year but campbell's kiddo snow he combined snowstorm with the kiddo tough daughter he had and uh, he was a few spots so he stood for a while and had some poa babies and then uh, yeah, zippo's remember. Kid, you remember him yeah yeah kiddo snow. he had quite a few uh babies by campbell's miss kitty and i was so disappointed when she was born because bud used that you know, as uh, almost like blackmail or just a hurt kiddo, you know, he was like, yep, kiddo had a dud, you know, had a dud, but he kept that dud for, you know, over 10 years. <laughs> he had a lot, but then when she started having all these loud babies like Dreamcatcher and stuff, I'm like, oh man, snowstorm, put color on her and all these stallions did. Of course, he bred her to, to few spots. I mean, uh, he didn't breed her to many, many non few spots he brought her to zippo's dad one time the black mare to driftwood's mr music but otherwise everyone he brought her to was a few spot so here's campbell's wonder boy these are a lot of campbell zippo babies you know of course and uh, they went all over the country this is one of the last ones i believe this is the last year when he sold one of the black mares foals and then campbell's lightning flash he Lots ended up color. with the cruise. Yep, yep. He, yeah, he had a lot of, he'd produce color. And uh, like I said, he was good friends with a lot of POA breeders. A lot of people respected Bud, and he had a lot of good uh, friendships in the POAs that were beyond POA friendships. You know, they knew the families and everything, you know. And for sure, Max Nebergall and Ray Peets, those three guys were like the three musketeers. You know, yeah. the, especially in the 70s and the 80s. In the 90s, you know, well, Ray passed away, and then, of course, Max uh, got out of POAs. But now here's Campbell's Mr. Rambo. Somebody had mentioned him earlier. I believe Melissa did from Minnesota. And uh, Irene Nelson from Spring Valley, Minnesota, who had the West Winds. And then uh, the POA Lada Dada, well, not by this mm-hmm. one, but Lada Dada came from West Winds program. And she had this Campbell stud for quite a while. Uh, Mr. Rambo, he was a, a Zippo son, I think. Campbell's yeah. Mr. Rambo, yeah. Okay, so, well, I'm glad you came on the show tonight. Me and too. Uh, thank you. I went a little over my two hours, but boy, I talked about a lot of POAs, so. Uh. I know. <laughs> you know, Bud told me a story, too, real quick. I'll let you know this. He told me that um, not only did he have these beautiful POAs, but he was into exotics, wasn't he? Right, he sure was, yeah. And he, with donkeys and just all different birds, I think, any birds oh, well, too? And ferrets. He had a yeah. lot of ferrets. When I was a little kid, 
you know, he was one of the first people we went to, you know, in Minnesota. He was a household name. But we went to Arnie Marker's place, and then he told us about Tomahawk and Bud Campbell. Of course, we bought Tomahawk right away. He kind of seen us coming, and he sold us Tomahawk. He wanted to sell us a bunch of mares, too, but we, he ended up passing us off to Max, and Max sold us a whole package of mares. But uh, that it led to Kiddo Tough, so it was good. But I remember, you know, probably a 9-, 10-year-old kid. Bud was one of the first ones that bragged about me knowing pedigrees he even gave me a big trophy bud was also a, a chairman for the clydesdale national show and different things when it came to rochester and uh, he was big into promoting draft horses he didn't own any but he just was big in that and uh, they would come to olmstead county is this county bud lived in which is rochester minnesota and he took one of those trophies and of course he was a painter and he painted the draft horse a poa like the burt's trophies with the blanket uh -huh. on it yeah and then he had a plaque made and it said grand champion pedigree man and he gave that me gave that to me for christmas in 1986 and it oh, was like a, it. yeah i still have it in my garage i think the ones broke off but the nine and then on the other side 86 and it's probably about three feet tall i should have took a picture of it but getting back to his place he always had a neat place that wasn't you know a fancy stables or breeding operation like you see now he had stalls kind of like porta stalls set up and stuff but he had a cement aisleway and different things well something caught my eye you know like a rodent ran by and i thought it was a rat or something and i was scared and then i told my dad there's something moving over there and bud starts laughing he's like oh that's my ferret you know and he had <laughs> yeah, he, and that's that connection again with those guys and carl house was kind of into that they would go to the Sharpings, ex, you know, exotic animals, and they were into, like, pot belly pigs or the miniature donkeys, and, and a lot of yeah. early POA breeders was into that stuff, into the, yeah, he had several burrows or whatever miniatures, and, you know, they had the big crosses on their back, and then, of course, yeah. the ferrets, and, yeah. And then, like I say, he raised some nice Appaloosas, too, uh, but did his son lived on the bottom of the hill, and he was kind of a, a dealer you know a peddler in horses that's how he made his money really his living right. and every once in a while he'd call his dad and say hey you i think that's where the black mare came from but uh you need to come and look at this one so that kind of helped bud he didn't have to hit the road as hard looking for breeding stock you know because his son would bring some home once in a while so that's awesome. Uh, yeah. I didn't know he did ferrets, too. That's really cool. Yep, ferrets. I remember those things. They used to scare me, and then I ended up, you know, because he wanted to give me one right away, and Mom and Dad said, <laughs> no way. So, you know, and I never, I never had a fear for, like, mice or rats or ferrets growing up then, but I didn't like snakes. I definitely still don't like snakes, but ferrets, yeah, that was, that was different, so. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Bud and Birdie were, they were just, uh amazing people and just salt of the earth i felt like you know, right they were just very genuine with me yeah well they were good people bud you know i knew him pretty well as a kid so you know i mean he could rip you a little bit rib you and stuff but he had a good oh, heart yeah. you know yeah, he used he to pick on sure. oh yeah <laughs> and that's the funny thing like him and max were so politically different you know and then and uh, he would rib my mom about and they actually were in the same party, but he'd rib her about th certain things she said. And he got her a plate one time of Nixon, and uh, he brought it to her house. Well, then when they came, like a year later, Mom had it set out to, uh, and he realized she was going to do that. So he brought a paper plate. <laughs> <laughs> Although he knew she was going to serve him, and she served him a meal on that plate he gave her with the president on it. So, yeah, little things like that, you know. And I know with the Markers kids, they used to go back and forth uh, with things like with uh, horse apple uh, necklaces and stuff they'd make for each other and send them for Christmas. Gag jokes, you know, but, but crafts yeah. that they made, not stuff that mm -hmm. they bought. So, right. Yeah. Well, I, you know. Eating. I meaning wish they were around. Yeah, they were meaning behind it. And heart, you know, it was heartfelt. Yeah. I wish they were around to see this, but hopefully there's enough people out there that remember Bud and Birdie and uh, that honor them this way. You know, I, we this show is called Black Hand and Beyond, Nikki, for on a purpose, you know, because it's honoring, like, Lori, who's still breeding POAs, and then the Black Hand part, the people we've lost and the people that really helped build this thing, you know, into such a big, a good organization and over the yeah. years so we just take it for granted we think well this is a little pony club and stuff but look at all these pictures we just seen tonight you know and over the years all these people that 
Uh, people are doing it right now. They're tucking their ponies away, or they're just out there waiting for the mare to fall tonight, and or they're making plans for their kids to ride this year in uh, in POAs, and it's just a cool thing that's lived on. So, it's a special place to grow up, and then it's a special place to continue on as an adult. Right. So I right. feel like it was uh, just a dream. I said the other day to somebody, I was like. Did that even happen? Was that my life? How could I have ever gotten so lucky to have lived that life? Right. Well, it was a whirlwind when you were really showing, especially in the early 2000s and stuff. You know, it was just things were coming, you know, going bang, bang, bang. And, you know, it's you don't appreciate it as much when you're living it. You know, I think athletes are kind of the same way, but I know a lot of people are that way. So, And I love looking at everybody, Tracy with with Jake and Lori with her stallions you know related and i just love watching the continuation of everybody you know continuing on and showing and right just it, i i do keep up even though i'm not active anymore i do do my best to keep up and i i really keep in touch with tracy and she keeps me abreast of what's going on right well somebody um, just asked i can't see because they're not on the ecam oh, yeah, thing that, Dickman. yeah yep. nikki is she wanted, yeah dream. Yeah, he's still doing. Uh, he's still doing great. Brad has him. Okay. Um, he, he has a farm, and I don't. So it's just <laughs> better for him to keep him. Um, so he has Dreamy. Uh, he has um, a couple of the last Dreamy babies that you know are still around that we had together. Right. And Dreamy's doing really good. I just saw him. I see him about once or twice a year. I stop over, and Brad's remarried and everything. He's you know has a great life. He's a cowboy for Christ minister, and he's a Whole, I know, see his, I don't watch his videos, no offense, Brad, but I, you yeah. know, I'm friends with him on Facebook, so I see him with yeah. his hat on and his guitar, and yeah. uh, that's good, you know, I was friends with you and Brad, you know, when you guys were first married, I knew you guys right before you got married, I think, and I yeah. alluded to you guys, I didn't want to put it on here now, but remember when you had your picture, your wedding picture on, and they were, they wanted yeah. a picture, so you, I talked about that the other day, about the cowboy hat, the last podcast, and I said, I know somebody that, you know, they made them put a picture of a POA on there, because they said, and I said, well, there's been precedent, we've already had Calvers without, you know, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah, but, so, but Dreamy's doing great, I mean, uh, Brad takes excellent care of him, and he has, you know, little old man feet problems, and Right. You know, I, like I said, he had that injury that he almost we almost lost him to, and so you know, Brad's an amazing farrier, and he just keeps him sound, and he's just doing so well. Oh, and, that's good. Uh, well, he's a '95 model, Dreamy, so that yeah, I didn't have yeah. no idea he was still alive. So uh, that's yep. good. Yeah. And he's doing great. I mean, he's right. I, you know, I, nobody rides him or they don't breed him, but he just has his own little pasture. He goes out every day, and well, he you know, deserves it. Yeah. He's living the life of Raleigh. Living the life, yeah. Pennsylvania. <laughs> I hope to do that someday. Do you know my uh, my mother in law lives in Reading, Pennsylvania? So oh, okay. when I go to go for Thanksgiving, I'd like to try to get some people together uh, as close to as close as I can, you know, to the to there because yeah, I know there's that's like, Stra- like two hours from from uh, Brad. The Strausses live in uh, near Reading in Williamsport. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right there, and and uh, Bill and Josie James was near Reading, right? Yep, yeah. they are right down the street from Perry Strauss. Okay, yep. are they still yep. alive, Bill and Josie? You know, I'm not sure. Okay. I know Perry is doing well. She has a granddaughter, and uh, her one daughter is married. Uh, right. But I don't, I don't know if um, Bill and Josie are still. Well, Tara, uh, I reached out to her the first time I was in Reading, and I said I'm at the Pagoda. In Reading, Pennsylvania, or outside of Reading, Pennsylvania, and she said, "I'm five minutes from you," <laughs> but I didn't have time to go. I think it was Thanksgiving weekend. Well, there's really usually a reason why we're there. That's what we might go for Thanksgiving this year. So, all right. right well, I need to wrap this up because it's getting uh, got it. nine o'clock my time. So that means you guys are almost ten o'clock. So daylight right. savings when you time. Get, when you get this way, let me know. <laughs> oh, I will. I'll do my best to get to visit. All right. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot, for Nikki, for being a guest. All right. Thank you. Thank Have you. A good night. You too. Bye. Bye. So that was my second great guest of the night. I feel pretty honored. We had a great show tonight. Thanks, everybody, for the nice words. Uh, uh, it is hard putting these podcasts together sometimes because of the pictures. Uh, the stuff comes 
uh, together pretty easy, the material, but getting all the pictures. And we had a lot of people, which I'm blessed, that sent pictures to me this time. Uh, and sometimes uh, they don't make the cut, not my fault. Sometimes it's, it's because of just the system or the cloud. They just vanish once in a while. But we had uh, close to 200 images tonight with pedigrees and stuff. Again, I want to thank uh, Lori Chrome. There she is, Lori, uh, and uh, all the good POAs she's raised. And uh, thanks for being a guest tonight. And then there's Nikki uh, with Dreamy when he was younger. I want to thank her for being on here as a guest. And then, of course, uh, the second part of the podcast tonight was honoring Bud and Bertie Campbell. And you can see the character Bud was there in his... Uh, Buffalo Hyde Code or whatever, and that was at the St. Paul Winter Carnival. Joan Schultz, a longtime POA promoter and uh, show mom, and ended up being a breeder and everything else. She took this picture uh, at the we promoted. They promoted POAs heavy at the St. Paul Winter Carnival, and Bud was in it for years. That's Driftwood Siri Tomahawk. He was very flashy in a cutter, or, uh, and like we seen earlier, a four wheel wagon. So. Uh, that's Bud for you, showing showing his POA as he was proud of him. So, all right, everybody, thanks a lot for watching this show. I apologize that it was long, but I think we got a lot of good information. We'll have a show again next week, so uh, follow the Facebook group to uh, to see what all the topics are going to be. Again, thanks everybody for watching. Have a good night. Enjoy the song. <laughs>